Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in the pretty sensational The Invincible. Now, this was developed by Starwood Industries, published by 11-Bit Studios and is available for £24.99 slash $29.99. Now a big, huge, mega shout and appreciation by the way has to go to Hannah from Evolve PR. Now while I was initially rejected for a code to bring you this guide, Hannah the superhero got a few more together and threw one to me, so thank you so much, Hannah. Legend of the PR industry. So let's get on with it anyway. The Invincible is a first-person game actually based on the motifs of the novel of the same name by Stanislav Lem. We play as an astrobiologist called Yasna, who ends up going from searching for astrobiology stuff to searching for a lost crew and all is not right on the planet of Regis Three. So as for achievements, there's quite a few randomly miscellaneous ones in here we need to do, and it will involve some reloading of checkpoints to get to the other side, other option, etc. I'll try to make it as less confusing as possible when we get there, but basically we need to find six memories throughout the game, we need to list 21 items from the Alliance Convoy quite a bit later on in the game, and of course the usual story-based achievements. Uh, but this was genuinely an absolute delight and f genuinely one of my favorites for the year. Now it'll take around 8 to 10 hours to complete and that's purely because you will need to do a second playthrough uh, in order to get the very last ending. So there's no way to avoid it. You're going to have to do a second playthrough. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And with that being said, let's do it. And we wake up pretty much like we've just drunk our big last Jack Daniels and honey bottle over Christmas. This is us waking up on uh, Boxing Day or Christmas morning. But the movements are pretty easy in the game. It's obviously left stick to move as usual. So anytime you see that little icon on screen, that means you can climb things and um, get up and stuff. Left trigger will be to hold. Now, a lot of the times the dialogue choices don't particularly matter. There is a couple of instances through the game where it does matter in order for a couple of achievements, which obviously I will let you know when we get there. It's not many, but as I said, um, I, obviously the ones that will matter, I will obviously let you know. But um, yeah, if I'm not speaking through a dialogue option, either just pick the same one as me if you want to be safe or just pick whatever you want. Oh, in fact, there's another achievement. We need to make sure all the crewmates um, are back on one of the landers as well. So, again, like I said, I'll be telling you exactly where to go and I'll be telling you exactly what to do and everything. So, near panic, my friends. So, press the right trigger. That's the interacting button with everything. And obviously, this is just like a little tutorial. So, you're just going to press the right trigger. Uh, basically, what it tells you for the most part. So, you're going to give yourself a little shock because you're so hot. I'm electric, baby! I can't hear you anymore. My receiver worked for a moment, but now there's only silence. Damn it, I lost my beacon. Where is it? I have two solid hectobars in the tank. That's enough for several hours. There aren't many supplies, which would suggest a quick recce. Or was it just the end of the mission? Just like I thought. Nothing. I'm on my own. The beacon can't be detected either. Yeah, when Yasna said no beacon for the first time, my my fat my fat ass thought he said no bacon. Uh, I thought she said no bacon, so uh, that's uh, I've got a problem. So anyway, um, this is what we can also use. So if you do end up finding yourself getting lost, um, you can obviously just press down on the D-pad. I say obviously, I haven't told you yet, but you can press down on the D-pad in order to get the map up and it'll uh, you'll sort of know where you are. Um, but if you can try and follow me, it's, it's a case of sort of looking at the terrain um, 
and the environment and just making sure that we're sort of on the same path. It's not too bad, but it can get a little confusing, obviously being a quite the planet with nout on it. Or is there something on it? Dun, dun, dun. Both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. We don't usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. That's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Leading to... Right! I was heading straight to the camp. Must be somewhere near. I can't just wait here. I just need to get a sense of my surroundings. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh, I sound like I need to stop doing this. And again, for the most part, we will just be blasting through everything. But for now, what we're going to do is pick the bottom option, uh, or the bottom one there. Now we get our kind of, um, there is a specific name for it, uh, tele, tele bigger. Yeah, the tele -biggerer. Uh So you can obviously shift it with the distance and zoom there. You can focus it in as well with the right trigger. Um, so now, <laughs> a lot of things obviously you can interact with in the game in order to get a lot of story um, story sort of things. Uh, the crocodile, what we're looking for, is up above. You can see three rocks here. The left looks like a dog. The one in front of us on the right looks like the crocodile, so that's what we're looking for. Um, but there's a lot of things you can interact with. Now, it kind of gets slightly confusing in terms of um, the things you need to, to actually interact with in order to progress the story. So a lot of the times, what looks like we're just uh, interacting with any old thing, it turns out we're not. And we actually need it to progress the story, as I said. Anyway, the dog-looking statue here is going to be on the left. And then we're finally going to start walking. Ah, bingo, found the dog. You get it? Bingo the dog? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Anyway, after, after, after she's all done here, we can just press the B button to back out. And away we go. So you can press in the left stick or the right bumper in order to sprint and jog ever so slightly for a couple of seconds anyway, and then she loses breath, obviously, so, you know, just in case. But we're just heading straight in front of us. You can see the device now right in front of us. That's what we're looking for. Um, obviously, if she's talking, we're not able to interact with things until she stops. We obviously can't skip any uh, cut. Uh, there's only a couple of cuts in the game we can skip, but we can't skip any dialogue. So we've got this one, but the detector's dead, so it makes no difference. Again, dialogue option here does not matter. Uh, but, you know, always worth taking, isn't it? So what we'll do now is head, take right, go up this little hill. And then we're going to go up and basically interact with the rope. And again, that's going to go about as well as drinking a whole bottle of whiskey on Christmas, n Christmas morning. Or at any time in the year. Close by. So we're going to make a little dent, a little, a little beeline, a little dart back down. So head back down to where we found the device by this little rock right here, and then we continue going on. Um, what is, I know she's obviously on this big planet and everything, and it must be really tiring and stuff, but 
Couldn't she have just got a jetpack, fly, fly around everywhere? That would have been a lot easier than sprinting for two seconds and then being knackered. Anyway, if you want to know where the tracker is to find your next destination as we head down, obviously press uh, right on the D-pad there and the little... You're, you're the white dot in the middle, and then the one that we're looking for is usually going to be straight in front of us. So if we take a right here to this rock, the... <laughs> Sadly, not the bacon. I wouldn't mind trying some alien -A's bacon, by the way. I bet they make it good. But here is what we need. It's flashing. It looks like a big old flashy nipple. But we got it. So there's the beacon. Before moving on, though, take a right and head into the water. This is actually the first memory which we are going to be grabbing. So get yourself in. And then eventually you'll know when it's a memory because the screen will fade to white and then the memory will start. But you can actually just hold the B button. Uh, for about five or six seconds in order to skip the cutscene, but the memory will still count. So that's one out of six. Will be done. Filtration, as we all remember, third rule. I was about to. Already awake. Good. My body might be awake, but my brain is still in the fridge. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. Clearly your sense of humor was first awake. Now, try to get up slowly. Dr. Gorski doesn't look... Well done, boys. Well done. We're all good. So with the first memory done, head back up the rock behind you here. There we go. And now we're going to make a break for it. So again, if you do get lost, of course, just keep looking up. We should be heading to the left, just toward, basically heading towards the crocodile um, landmark. I was going to call it a statue, but it's a landmark, isn't it? So if we just take a left here, basically what we're going to find is the exit. Um... Yeah, so, I, I mean, playing through the game was brilliant, but it got very confusing as to what we needed to, if we could just blast on with the game or if we actually had to interact with things first before doing it. So, yeah, so just to be on the safe side and so you're not wasting time, we'll just do that. So we've interacted with the exit. Now we can head back to the left and then just continue on straight. Ago. So that was just a little linear path um, that we've just seen. That lovely little beautiful planet, Regis 3. Apart from the fact there's no, uh, you know, KFCs or anything on it, which is disappointing. Uh, so we take a right here, just dropping down off the rock. And then again... It is just a case of continuing forward, taking in your surroundings, breathing in the scenery, but not too much because you'll probably, well, you'll lose your nut. And you need your nut. So, don't go up the right hill. We'll continue going down to the left. Continue marching towards the camp. Oh, the Grand Old Duke of York. He had 10,000 men. Sorry, wrong marching. Sorry. Um, yep, yeah, so once you... Sneak your way in. Uh, again, just continue on forward. Uh, 
Right, so whip out your telemarketing binoculars, bin binoculars, uh, interact with the tents here, and if there's anything else, we can have a little interact in, but it should only be the tents, which should be all good. Um, no, mate, I can't hear you. So what we need to do then is turn around, and then from here, take a right. So it's basically going left if you came in the, the right way. Uh, this is the only way down that we can go, so we're going to go for a little wee-wee slide all the way home. I mean, not home, but you know what I mean. I hope. <sighs> okay. I'm at the bottom. <coughs> Looks better from here. I'll be with you soon. It's a sandstorm, baby! Fred Durst, Limbiscuit style, s snowstorm, sandstorm. That's right, baby! What does Fred Durst sound like his uh, bowels never dropped, by the way? Oh, I can't beat a bit of Limbiscuit, classic, but uh, yeah, he sings like his uh, bowels are in his throat. Anyway, what, what happened where? Sandstorm blew in your face, and now you're. Again, suffering the the hangover, the JD and Honey hangover. So take a sit down, take a breather, and then we will continue straightwards onwards again. Uh, after this, we're going to say the camp, of course, right in front of us. I'm much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But I don't remember it. Did, did I black out again? And hop up closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself. So after we've completely knackered ourselves out by climbing up that whole bunch of rocky rock rocks, this uh, second memory out of six will be automatic. Uh, so it'll automatically play. There is going to be uh, no reason that you can miss this. Again, you can skip and hold the cutscene by pressing and holding the B button for some seconds. 
crew. Dr. Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have... Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am I doing here? What the hell am I doing here? Apparently, you uh, accepted a space mission to come here, so... I'm no, sp I'm no space bro, but uh, that's why I think you're probably there. So, onwards and upwards again. Again, only another linear path here to follow. How are Dr. Nasna? Nasna? Man, my brain. Dr. Yasna. So, what you're going to see is a robot who is one of our robots who won't attack you. And finally, we'll get our first achievement of the game 20 minutes in. The camp! Right, so... There is a couple of things that we are going to do. Um, you can say stop here. Um, but there is a way that you can actually miss these achievements um, by, again, choosing the wrong dialogue option, etc., or just uh, going on. So, um, yeah. So for now, just follow the same dialogue options that I do. I don't think they matter. I, in fact, they don't matter too much at this point. But in just a minute, they will. So we're going to use his arm. Basically going to interact with his whole body. Because he's seen you and was like, If she sees me, she'll go away. Oh, uh, maybe if I... RT, default position. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy. But you clearly don't want to cooperate. Right, so after you've checked over the robot and he's clearly not working... Head to the sort of most left camp pod, if you will. Looks nice and nice and cozy in here. Uh, ooh, this nest nice book. Nice little bed and stuff. Anyway, go through into the next area where you are going to see Dr. Krauter. Again, doesn't matter the dialogue options here, because the only guy in here is Dr. Krauter. And that, uh, I assume, means carrot in German, right? I don't know. But anyway, basically, something's happened to these bros, um, all these doctors, and they're sort of babbling like a baby and stuff. So again, uh, what are you going to do with these doctors? You are going to uh, just look over them. Uh, so anywhere where the hand icon is, of course, you're just going to keep doing that for now. Now, this achievement is actually missable. If you don't go in and speak to Dr. Krauski, or <laughs> Krauski, Krauter, you will miss the achievement. So very important to speak with him and go through all of his vital readings and try and shave his moustache for fun. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Astrogator. Silence. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. Glad you didn't lose your head. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Testing. One, two, three. Uh, copy you, Doctor. Loud and clear, but to the point. As I understand it, there's only Doctor Crowther at the camp. And he's not well. What happened to him? I... I was just about to examine him. Doctor Crowther, please don't be startled. I need to take your hand. Temperature normal. Pulse too. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, doctor. Do you have any idea what's wrong with it? Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movements and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor. But it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of the disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests and focal plane tomography of his brain. Otherwise, I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first thing... So here, what we're going to say then is we're going to press the X button. He needs to be evacuated 
immediately. Not just Dr. Carrot, of course, but, uh, you know, we'll, um, yeah, we'll sort him out. Right, so we need to now find the mission log, see what up. So head left and go through this little pod again, and then obviously what we're going to find now is the little book in the bed in the room on the right. And again, once you find the mission log, all you need to do is just flick through every page and interact with every interactable interactive, uh, which is on the page. On each page, as it were. But it will do. Dr. Crowter kept records. Meticulous as always. What's in there? Hmm. Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. He followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowter had one as well, didn't he? Like everyone in the crew, Doctor. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. BA-2316. Noting. 316. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Astro Crocodile Gator. Oh my god. Right, once you've done that, then interact with the detector. And this is a nice working one, which we're going to use to detect things. Hence the name detector, of course. That's great. There we go. So once, as you can see, all infrared stuff comes up with things sort of underground and everything that we can look at. So once we know that's good to go, we can now go ahead and just find the rest of the crew. Easy peasy, apart from this scattered everywhere. I don't know what happened. I don't want to know what happened. But anyway, out we come. Hello, Sandstorm! Right, so once we've done that, uh, and we've spoken, interact with Dr. Crowder, we now have to interact with the robot, try and get Artie uh, working once again. Head back on its feet remotely and secure Crowder. I have everything I need to just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Huh. Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. <laughs> and again, here for the next dialogue option, we're going to choose the X button. I'm not leaving Crowter alone like this. So, very important. I'm not leaving Crowter alone like this. Now, if you do end up making a mistake or anything like that, you can pretty much just um, reload the checkpoint, although it does put you kind of uh, a little bit further back, so just be aware of that. But you, if you do make a mistake, you can reload the checkpoint. So then you interact here with the broken relay. That's not looking like it's going anywhere fast. So what we'll need to do is interact with this three sets of yellow boxes that we can interact with. So it's not in this one, but if you turn directly behind you, there is a set of yellow boxes with the relays in. Um, which I'm telling you now because I went to the one in front of the robot and it was the wrong one. Not here either. I have the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned on. Couldn't have put no bacon sandwiches in, huh? Nah, of course not. Right anyway, follow the interactive little dot there, pop the relay in, and this for some reason is super satisfying and I really want to do it. Kind of reminds me of that uh, Prometheus scene um, where she gave birth to the alien in a weird way. Anyway, we now need to assist in fixing said Androbot. So let's, uh, well, I guess let's assist. Good. It's receiving instructions. Oof. I don't know if the Androbot should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes, unfortunately. Hmm. A positronic brain. That's correct readings. Receptors. Hmm. Oh, 
it worked. He moved. Finally. Artie should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. <laughs> well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Uh, please check his legs. Hmm. Could be the server motor. Ah, that's it. Gotcha, you tin bastard. Damn, bro, that's a uh, pretty robotist, isn't it? Jeez. Anyway, robot's good to go, sort of. So from here, what we're going to do is go into the right-hand side little pod thing right here, the one that was just on its own. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to grab memory number three out of six. And it is, if we look to our left, without the map. Without the map. Hmm. Interesting why I forgot to edit this bit out. Um, it's the fish. There it is on the left-hand side. Sorry, there was no reason for me looking at the map. Um, so again, once you find the fish, this is memory three out of six. And again, we can go ahead and hold the B button to skip it. Something. Dragonfly, come in. Uh, hello, Regis. Dragon... And now we can lovingly go ahead and find the rest of the crew. Now everyone's probably arrived, right? <laughs> Alive, right? Red. Right, so from here we're going to go straight ahead and into new areas of depths and wonder. So you can see like a little cave in front of us there. We're just going to continue heading up towards it. Now, there will be moments like this where it'll throw you off, um, you know, split paths and everything. But, of course, we're going to go straight here, and I'm obviously going to tell you where to go so we don't get lost. Um, but, obviously, for your second playthrough, it might be worth just... I got lost incredibly much on my second playthrough. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll come to that later. So, we're just heading slightly left, um, just going through these little bits of rocks. You're going to have a look up at this landmark here, and we'll interact with that just in order to get... Uh, again, if we need it, if you get lost, you can always find that there. Uh, otherwise, there is a little arch which is going to be in front of us that we are going to go through. It's just a sketch. No markings. Well, if so, we should do it. What would you call them? I'll call them Titans. Has a nice ring to it. Noted. Well, one more thing, Astrogator. The Titans are almost white, unlike the environments around them. Yes, thank you. That's valuable information. Be useful in navigating. I seem to have gone too far. I can see the field markings that Dr. Gorski left behind, and I haven't found anyone yet. They all may have left the area as well, but before you move on... And as you can see, we can't actually make it just yet, uh, because we need to find Dr. Uh, Mariati, or Mariachi, or Mari... The, the woman one. I forget, I forget her name, sorry. But anyway... So, again, there's nothing to grab here for the moment, but we do have to just come here. So, go to the right, go back under the archway that we came. And there it is. And we will actually continue our merry little way going left. <laughs> so, we're going to go left. We're going to continue heading down the little hill here. But it can be frustrating because you just kind of want to sprint and just get on with it. But... Well, it must be tiring on your own, etc., etc. But anyway, Maris Piper Potatoes is in this area. So we are going to go straight. And by straight, I mean we're going to go slightly right, first of all. We're going to interact with the metal structure. 
before we do that. It's a phenomenon. The artifact turned out to be too big to dig up or to subject to chemical and spectrometric analysis. Dr. Gorski set out to investigate its source to find some end. And? Did he? That I don't know, unfortunately. So we're going to head down towards the metal structure here. The reason we're doing that is because we can actually um, begin to jump underground slightly. So obviously it's going to tell you with the tracker here to whip it out. Whip out your tracker, bad boy. So you need to turn around in order to get down here and we can find... Uh, this is basically just the next memory. So this is going to be memory number four. So there's going to be a couple of drills here chilling out. Um, so you just need to interact with the drill that was right in front of us there in order to get memory four out of six. It's a drill! So damn loud! No. No point in going back this way. Look here, do you see it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, it's the same on the other side. So interact with it again in order to shut it off, but that one is a very, very easy one to miss there. Uh, so we will now have done that, so it's all good. Right, so we're going to head back up, back out, and try and find Dr. Maris uh, Maris Potato Piper, Maris Piper Potatoes. So, on our way, just continuing upwards. Come on, you can't be that out of breath, man. You'll fit, yo. You was you was an astronaut. And if we take a look to the left, we basically needing to head up. Um, now you think, or well, you wouldn't think, but it would be nice if you could go up one of the uh, geysers right there, smash it straight up. But no. So straight in front of us there is the journal, so have a little flick through this. Geological cross-section? Measurements? Here's a Merritt's notes. She must be somewhere close. Please search the entire area thoroughly. And then, so you can obviously see who we're looking for is to the right of us, but she is up above. So continue on straight and then right in order to go up the hill. You're going to find what I believe is probably her backpack or something. And then we will find her chilling. <sighs> the signal's coming from a cast of backpack. That's concerning. I'm close, but I can't see her. She's here. I found her. Marit, wake up. Wake up. Do you hear me? Dr. Marit? No. No vital Base functions. What's I going need on? two. One. Two. Three. Come on. No, come on. <gasps> One. Two. <sighs> Don't do this to me, Marit. Don't. Please. Wow, Mrs. Uh, Maris Piper Potato Woman is... Well, she's not looking good. But anyway, we're going to choose the options here. I won't give up. Um, again, not sure if these ones do make a particular difference. But remember, we need to get all the crew, apparently dead or alive, on the hopper. Get everyone completely home. So, any dialogue option that comes up with... Oh, Jesus. Now, if she didn't feel you after the first 20 compressions, she's probably not going to feel you... Uh, breaking her chesticle bones. She's... I know. Doctor. Yes, now. We have to find the others. Please give me a minute. Of course. Everything will be fine. All fine. Next. 
So don't worry, we will have to come back for her later on. But for now, we're going to try and find Dr. Koval. And he is going to be not too far. So if we continue on straight and head down this little piece of hill, obviously what we can see, we're going to go right. And again, you're effectively just following the tracker. So straight in front of us is going to be Dr. Koval. And he ain't going to be looking too good either. Don't do this to me. Oh. You're alive! Did you hear that, sir? Cobble's alive. I didn't doubt it for a second, Doctor. What's his current state? Checking. Parameters normal, yet he's completely unresponsive. Cobble? Cobble? His eyes are... So empty. Just like Crouch's. Koval, what the hell is wrong with you? Are all the symptoms the same as Dr. Crouch's? <sighs> he's calm. Calmer. Well, at least he's alive. Now listen to me, Asna. The lander is on its way, but before you get Dr. Koval on board, I want you to do something. Yasna. I'm listening. Please look around for his journal. So he's looking uh, like Dr. Carrot, isn't he? A bit bit dribblyish, a bit babyish, a bit like he's had uh, too much gin and tonics on the night out. Uh, but anyway, just smash through all of the papers um, until we can effectively just pick him up. Because we are strong. I'll go over them, but it may take a while. Huh. Have you found it? No, it's uh, nothing about Dr. Gorski. Uh, found them. Surprisingly accurate. He wrote down Gorski's every step. Great. Let's get Koval to the evacuation area. Can you carry him, Doctor? <laughs> Won't be pretty hard in 1G. And when I say strong, I mean strong, where we actually worked out in the gym instead of getting uh, the broccoli haircut and then filming <laughs> filming your other broccoli head bros for uh, crap talk and all the other stuff and then, you know, doing the classic uh, Bradley Castlebury fake weights thing. Yeah, I squatted 700 pounds. Bro, your arm looks... <laughs> well, it looks like that thin... Thin piece of rock straight in front of us. Anyway, enough about broccoli heads and TikTok. We are effectively... That's that's where you go in. We're continuing to head straight down in order to put Dr. Gorval into the hovel. I don't get it. I could have led to all this. Crowter, our dear Marit, and now Cobble. Unprecedented degradation of equipment, recurring connectivity issues. It all has to be related. On the other hand, how could it be? There's not much on this planet. Some primitive life forms in the ocean, metal deposits in the ground. Although the latter got Dr. Gorski's interest, for some reason. It's difficult to find a consistent pattern. All of this seems insane. Pure chaos. I don't believe in coincidences. The greatest threat to humans is usually, well, humans. So I believe our crew members have fallen victim to the Alliance's actions. I must say, in any other situation, I'd be sure of it. The Invincible, however, is not in the Lira system yet. Their other ships have never even ventured near these regions of the galaxy. Or at least, there's no indication. Except for all these disturbing events. Right. Something doesn't add up. <sighs> See you up there. So, now we are going to go back for the Maris boiled potato woman. Because, um, of course, as I said, the achievement is... 
we need to go. So we're going to say why I have to go back for uh, <laughs> Carrot. For Marit. So we've got to take her to the lander. I know she's... Um, I know she's a bit, you know. Bleh. Then, but hey, it's what we've got to do for achievements. You know how it is. So we can head straight back down. Of course, she's going to be straight in front of us. So we'll just pick her up, turn around, and bring bring the mashed potato. Oh, so, sorry, that's uh, that's not good. She kind of is a bit of a mashed potato now, isn't she? Since she's gone, uh, we're heading up this little hill here on the left, and then slightly to the right. Eventually, when uh, Yasna decides she wants to run more. How do you think so? I'm managing. Somehow. Forgive me, but I need to know if you're ready to continue your mission. <sighs> ready? <sighs> I'm carrying her. Going forwards. <sighs> I wonder why she's so light. The gravity... No, Astrogator. Not this time. for over two decades. We made of sterner stuff. The sternest. Many of us relied on her. I did. Did you know that headquarters offered her a promotion? She would have been the first female astrogator in the history of the Commonwealth. I had no idea. Doesn't matter anymore, really. Not entirely. Merit will be awarded posthumously. I'm taking a bit your word, Astrogator. This could pave the way for others. And that's what she would have cared about the most. No doubt about it. Hey, Doc, just, uh, I hope you don't mind, uh, Maris Potato is, uh, ch ch just sleeping, okay? Just gonna squeeze her in right here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, just gonna chuck a dead woman in the middle of you, there we go. Right, so, now we're gonna find the last Doctor. So, behind the lander is the archway that we went earlier, which we couldn't get down. Now, as it turns out, we can get down. I'm leaving the excavation site. Uh, how did he come down? <sighs> so, onwards into the unknown. Oh, there he is, man. He just had to jump down. But Gorski is close. So, uh, again, this is kind of a linear path. We're going to get our second achievement here. And this is basically for reactivating the flying teleprobe. Uh, not much to do. Not much science involved here. you got to press the buttons which they tell you to press. Then you'll get the achievement called the teleprobe. You'll see. Okay. I'm opening the probe. Turning the systems on. No, no, stop. Wait for my instructions. There's a button on the left side of the fuse box. Hold it, and then turn the dial again. 
Go ahead. Slide records? Correct. I, I didn't know we had access to them. You couldn't have known. This is not standard procedure. Now, you'll have to deal with this quite a lot, basically, with the teleprobes and everything that we come by. They basically take pictures. So, again, just like the, the mission data logbook, um, you will have to just basically go through each page, through each picture, and if there's anything to click on the picture, we have to click on the picture to get to the next picture, to progress the story, to get to the next picture, to get to the next story. Basically, go through everything. That's That's the gist of what I'm saying. Twelve hours passed. Three crew members are still there. Dr. Gorski must have left already. We lost contact shortly thereafter. The probe followed him, and he followed the detector's readings. Going after those metal structures. Yes, that's what I meant. What's next? Last slide. There's mostly noise. Nothing in particular stands out to you, Doctor. They were digging and suddenly, poof, people are dead. No need to shout, Astrogator. I'm just letting you know what I see. That's all. Uh, hang on. An absurdly high electromagnetic field reading. That's something. Sort of. What are the earlier readings? Checking. Still high on the slide just before. And earlier, quite normal. It happened in a matter of seconds, but there's, there's nothing except dunes, sand, a few rocks, a shadow. A shadow? Another sandstorm, I guess. All right, Doctor, let's move on. You may turn on the fuses now. We'll take the probe with us. Hello, darkness, my old friend. How good to make you work again. So there we go. Two achievements in 52 minutes. We're in for a good day. Right, so again, choose whichever one you want. I normally just go for sort of positive responses because, you know, if you're sort of alone, abandoned, and Dr. Carrot and Potato, ah, which I only just realized, um, Dr. Gorski can be like the Brussels sprout. Uh, doesn't have a uh, doesn't have a great ring to it, but anyway, I just want to be positive on what is kind of a dampening opening hour in this game. So uh, yeah, you can either like I said, there's obviously a lot of talking, so you can either just wait until uh, until what Novik says and finishes, or we can just crack on with it, uh, which eventually we will crack on with it by heading straight and going down. Well, effectively turning around from where we are and then heading down. Please enter Luna. L. U. N. A. Done. Now, a few more tweaks, and you'll have a flying measurement center at your disposal. I don't see these metal structures anywhere. The only surface structure report. The detector's measurement is very clear. I'm going straight on. No now we're going to whap out our detection meter thing. There's basically going to point. There's going to be a point in just a moment where we can interact with it. Uh, here it is. No, there it is. Well, isn't that great of us, Yazzie? Well, I'm at the first clear branching of these structures, such as reported by Dr. Gorski. All right. What happened next? So next up, we're going to go and take a right just up this hill here. There's a bit, a bit of a rock formation in the way. Um, but as you can see, this is where we are going. Man, why don't you run more, damn it? Anyway, continue onwards and straightwards. Slowly does it, though, apparently. The 
probe detected something. I see that in the readings. What is it exactly? Well, the structure from the notes, it fits the description perfectly. Well done, Luna. I knew I could count on you. Well, we didn't bring it to the surface for no reason. Even in the first stage procedure. And now I'm going to apply for my own. As soon as you find Dr. Gorski, I'll see to it myself. All right, how about that point? What does it look like? So, he's not at point two, so we are, of course, going to point three. Now, I should say as well that with the countdown, uh, with the countdown dialogue options as we continue straight up this hill, uh, if you do end up missing it, don't panic or anything like that. It's literally, it's you, you won't uh, void any achievements or it won't punish you, etc., etc. The, the important sort of dialogue choices I found were the ones where the, uh, you didn't have a countdown timer put against you. So, don't worry if you do end up missing one. Otherwise, let's spin in around. Let's go out down. See if there's any broskies or alien skis. Busting out of my chest. And not out of my test. Pickles. Right, so we can continue heading down just into the water here. We're going to eventually wade our way through it. Two points. Or at least that's what he told Cobble. What he did next, it's hard to assess. The battery in the detector lasts for only a few hours, so he couldn't have gone much further. The fourth point is a structure that fills a rock massive, on top of which he found surface structures. Sounds like a crucial node in this whole system. some tangible evidence that he was going this way. <laughs> Good. It's downhill all the way, Doctor. I wouldn't be so sure, Astrogator. The next point is at a height of approximately 100 meters. Oh my god, it's shoes! We have found shoes! Anyway, time for a quite easily missable achievement if you didn't know what you're doing. Basically, there's this bit of lava on the ground. All we're going to do is just hop over it in order to get the volcano. Volcanologist achievement for coming close to hot lava. So there's the fourth point we've just um, discovered up the top there. So again, dialogue option, pick anyone that you want. And again, this one is easily missed. If you didn't know or if you didn't think they, this was an achievement tied to it, you're going to have to hop, skip and jump over. And the volcanologist, the volcanologist achievement will unlock. So we can then... Just continue on forward. And we're going to take a right just up on this rock coming up very slowly. There it is. So make sure to take a right and head upwards. Yes, they're on their way. Thank you for your assistance. Without your help, it would have taken much longer. What's the plan for the second flight? The same place? That would work best. Certainly proven. When you and Dr. Gorski come back, I'll send the lander right away. <laughs> Yo, son of a bitch, you left me! 
Anyway, what we're going to do is take a right. So effectively, uh, a very immediate right here as we go up the hill. Of course, the last path there was pretty linear as I can't get over a couple of rocks. There we go. So, uh, yep, yeah, we have finally reached the top. It's a bit knackering, but um, mm, it's it's nice. Although cold, I expect. Conversations between Koval and Gorski. No, Jasna, you're the one who reported it to me. Right after you landed. Seriously? Well, I... I, I don't see anything like it now, sir. Azimuth, 350. A distance, 200 meters. Copy that. I'm sending the probe. Got it. I see the bushes. And the doctor? Um, hard to tell. Visibility is poor. Huh. It's going to be harder than... So once you've interacted here with the black bushes in front of us, um, it's all starting to get a little confusing. But we're an hour in, so hooray! So turn around and then basically continue following the path now to the right. As if you were continuing onwards, obviously. That's what you normally do with, uh, with games. <laughs> Luna looks like she's got a bit of a... <laughs> looks like she was happy to see us there with that little metal thing poking out. Uh, right, so, uh, yeah, just continue onwards. Linear as Lunia. That was terrible. Sounds like the perfect research unit. Maybe even better than a human. Well, let's not exaggerate. I don't know. For me, it's only a matter of time before machines surpass their creators. The only question is when. Oh, we have a problem. Something serious? Huh. Maybe it's true that machines will surpass us, but not today. The route determined by the algorithm goes over a chasm. I can repeat the command. No, no. I'll go around. Uh, unfortunately, this is an outdated model. Such mistakes are inevitable. But the perception module itself has already been greatly improved. Its accuracy increases exponentially. Oh, exponentially? <laughs> can you imagine us, proteinaceous creatures, developing so quickly, sir? No, not in the course of evolution. You can't perfect a person like that. That's right, you can't. We wait thousands of years for visible changes. <laughs> Have you started to fear for your position? Well, everything indicates that the clear distinction between humans and robots will soon disappear. And then what? Oh, it will be fine at first. Will feel more powerful than ever. And they, by becoming more human like, will blend into our society. The boundaries will disappear. They will be granted their rights and given a voice. They will live on par with humans. You know what, Doctor? That sounds like some blasted science fiction. One in which I definitely don't want to live. Shh, Astrogator. Can you hear that? No, uh, what am I supposed to be hearing? That's the point. Nothing. Silence. We're talking about robots, and Dr. Gorski still hasn't spoken on the channel. Well, we don't know. He must be a long way from here. These bushes are... kind of weird. You better stay away, Doctor. I'd like a brief description. Just keep a distance. Allow me to use the language I would use to describe living forms, sir. Of course. So as it turns out in this area, you don't actually have to interact with anything. You can actually just continue on going down the hill straight in front of us, but you can have a look at the size and the setting and everything if you really want to. But like I said, it's not um, it's not required if you don't want to. So you can uh, just crackle on, my little piggies. Bean in a rusty brush-like layer. That's how it looks. To put it briefly. Would you also venture to guess their significance, some function, purpose? 
Staying on the topic of biological analogies, which in itself is already a major scientific distortion. Yes, yes, I understand. These are not real plants. But if they were plants, those protruding parts climbing up, they would serve to a... Astrogator, Gorski's not here. I'm afraid he continued to explore. And if he went where I think he did, he might have lost contact with the camp as well as Dragonfly. Yes, and we will most likely lose contact too. Uh, possibly. Well, there's only one way to be certain. It's your decision, sir. Please continue the search. We have to find him. That's the unwritten rule, isn't it? Under no circumstances. And as we head through the Black Death bushes of... I mean, not life. Uh, but anyway, as we just head through here, we're going to get another automatic memory that's going to uh, uh, happen. But this is one we can't actually skip, so... <laughs> Landed. I repeat, Hopper has landed. Astrogator, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Any side effects? Landing wasn't too hard on you? All good. Spine still in one piece. No signs of overstrain. Not even shortness of breath. Perfect. Hopefully the hike to camp goes just as smoothly. Oh yeah, I mean, imagine if your spine was in two places. That would, that would pinch on the nips a bit, wouldn't it? Anyway, so here we are then in a completely new area. Um, you can have a look at the beetle here if you want and take a little look inside if you so wish. Don't think there's anything particularly necessary though. The hatch is half open. Did they report hydraulics failure? How should I know? You were the last person in contact with the crew doctor. Right. I'm inside. And how is it? For now, we have to assume that we are left with only one lander. Is it that bad? You don't need to be a technician to see that Beetle's lost its buzz. Nah, that's unfortunate. I'm taking Hopper out of here. I'll send yeah, I don't think that's uh, much to do with any story. Uh, just, um, in fact, it's just story, so never mind. Right, we're going to continue marching straight onwards, not rightwards. Not worse than this. Equipment breaks from time to time, that's normal. But... Now, go ahead. What's bothering you? This lack of communication. It takes too long, especially considering there's a cyberneticist amongst them. Yes, it worries me too. So, yeah, you can check out the genuinely fantastic scenery. You can see Uranus from a mile off. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I had to get that joke in there somewhere, didn't I? So we will just continue heading on straight for the time being. And then we'll take a little left here, um, just to have a look at the field flag again. That's just a point of interest. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do actually miss this one. Uh, but after this, we'll continue. We'll go back at ourselves. Continue going straight to pack to pick up a packet of cigarettes. What do you call them? Where you come from? You can't call them. You can't call them 
the, the, the F word now because, oh, boy, wouldn't you get your ass beat. Cigarettes, here they are. So pick up the cigarettes anyway. And then, again, you go straighter than a straight thing in straight land. And no respect for an alien ecosystem at all. What kind of litter? Cigarette butt. A crumpled pack. So, taking off the helmet. Next up, we will take a cheeky little left. And look at that anus at the top there. Incredible. I mean, that's the, the sun, right? Gotta be the sun. Anyway, once again, we just continue onwards. Any dialogue options do not matter. Again, I just agree and, you know, keep everyone happy. I also have academic concerns. That's completely understandable, Doctor. However, we must focus on the mission. It has the highest priority, always. Forgive me, but such thinking is an anti-example of the galactocentric code. We should explore other worlds while keeping our own interference to a minimum, whether in the solar system, in the far reaches of the Milky Way, or in a complete... Excuse my interruption, sir. Can you please confirm that I'm on the correct route? Yes, I confirm. This rate will reach the camp within an hour. So, continuing. Now, I've heard a thing or two about galactocentrism. Do not meddle in other non-human matters. Seize the void, but do not attack that which has developed its own equilibrium over millions of years. Do not consider anything other than human as either better or worse. It all sounds beautiful, Doctor. But no one will be satisfied with the void. Or someone else's will. <sighs> Sir, if you could put your indicators on and take a left here, that'd be great. BMW and Audi drivers need not apply, apparently. But yes, there is such thing as an indicator on a BMW and an Audi, wouldn't you know? Scientists who spend most of their lives idly gazing at the sky. Like me? Not at all. You are actively involved in space exploration, Doctor. What is this? Astrogator, I found a peculiar inorganic structure. It looks like some spiky metal growths. Artificial plants? Is spontaneous growth possible with this type of structure? Oh, I've never seen anything like this. Oh, I feel nauseous. Suddenly. Please don't touch the Been on the surface for just under half an hour. That's not it. I feel darkness. Wow, spewing again. Anyway, now we have entered yet another memory of sorts. Um, but yeah, we're going to continue our search for Gorskenhausen, and we just, yep, wake up from nowhere. So, yeah. So, with that complete, and we eventually get over our hangover, and we're good for a bit, we've had a greasy burger, we should be fit for consumption for five. So you can have a look, there's nothing at the top, so you can just continue onwards and forward facings. So, uh, Novik is going to be, I'm big! And also, if you manage to do everything with Crowter earlier on, you will now get the achievement Crowter is alive. Um, obviously, if you didn't interact with him earlier on, you won't get this achievement. But, since we did, this is where we get the achievement. Crowter is alive, yeah? Crowter is unt alive? Mm. So, have a chat, and, um, you know, as usual, run on your merry little way. I confirm, Gorski was here. His rope is still hanging from the slope. That's a good sign. Since he left it, he intends to come back this way. <sighs> Why hasn't he yet? Going down after him. Tell me one more thing. When it comes to Marit, are you going to use a grave tapper? Yes, I am considering that as a possibility. And what is. That's a report. One sec. Oh, I'm at the end 
the rope. Isn't that good? Not at all. What do you mean? Damn. Oh, that's the last thing I need. Oh, oh man. Yasna finding herself in many a situation here. It's not the greatest planet in the world, is it? Right, so if, uh, basically all we got to do is, um, after this we'll look at the ground, then we'll look up, and then we will look at the probe, and the probe, Luna, will help us. Will save us. Will save us from certain death. Uh, do you have a better idea? I, I can just jump off. Is that... Safe. A substantial fall on unsteady ground. This is hardly a maneuver that I would describe as safe. So let's take a moment to analyze the situation. I'm thinking if Gorski went down this way and didn't break anything. Yeah, we don't know that yet, sir. He could keep going even with injuries. All right, so do you have another idea? Oh, will I be hanging like this until the end of time itself? There is a certain possibility, or rather uncertain, but maybe it's worth trying. I'm listening. Can you see the probe? Yes. It's flying near me. If I instructed it to fly as close as possible to you, you could grab onto it. Are you sure it will hold me? That I cannot guarantee. Like I said, it's a highly uncertain idea. So, with this next dialogue option, we're going to choose two meters. Please drive two meters. I don't know what happens if you pick the other one, but we're going to go for two meters forward. Two meters forward. And then you can grab on and everybody are happy, eh? Stop, that's enough. You have a really good eye. Exactly two meters. <sighs> you could say so. I fell from a lower height. It was a soft landing, though. So we're going to get another achievement here called the City for entering a strange metal city, as it were. Um, so you can have a look. In fact, we are going to take just a look up here. And we're going to just have a look at the sort of structures and everything. Um, but do not proceed forward. So we're going to have a look at all the structures and everything for a minute. But do not proceed forward through the little gap in the wall straight ahead. Do not. That's where we don't need to go. And the reason is, if we go back down and then take the right-hand side path, um, we can get two achievements, which we're going to grab. And this is the first instance of doing it one way and then doing it the other, and then reloading the checkpoint and then doing it the other way. So you can come up here, um, have a chat with Novik, interact with all the flags and everything. No, no. There's no point in jumping to conclusions yet. Dr. Gorski set up the flags. Sir, he kept going, despite the lack of communication with the rest. You'd have to see it with your own eyes, sir. This place. Gorski may have lost himself in his discovery. Are you joking, Doctor? Lost himself? Gorski? He may not have respect for the unknown, but he has his feet firmly on the ground. I think he must have discovered something. And since he suffers from excessive ambition, he's capable of stupid acts in the name of a breakthrough. Well, I admit, that sounds more like him. You must trace his steps, Doctor. Once you're happy, satisfied, dissatisfied, and whatever. But once you've done anyway, we can now head back down to where we started, continue on the straight and narrow path. So there's basically, in just a moment, uh, again, we're just going to take yet another linear path, basically all the way around. Uh, we're going to uh, get through the clearance, but there is a um, platform, big platform that we can go on. So the two achievements are, we need to basically 
go straight through every hole um, and get that one achievement. Then we can reload the checkpoint and make no mistakes. And the, and the way we'll do that, as you'll be able to see, is using the detector. And that'll tell you where the weak points are. And of course, you will avoid those weak points. See how weak points work out? Weak! yet. So yes, this is the start of it then. So you will fall down the first hole uh, anyway. So as we're going to cross this part here, this is... Uh, you can't miss this hole, so you will fall down this one. So what we're going to do for this bit then is just continue to run around falling down holes until the... You... You be quishous. You be quishous holes. I think I said that right. Probably wrong. But anyway... You basically need to create more holes than a premier in orgy. Introduce the detector. Will indicate the thickness of the structures. Uh, out of the frying pan. Uh, into a hole. Oh, damn it! What is it this time? Take a guess, sir. The same hole. Uh-huh. And there we go, mate. Bang Tady. So once that has unlocked, you can press start, go to load game. And like I said, if you haven't loaded game yet, it does take you back. <sighs> Depends on the instance. Like this one actually isn't too bad because we can just run straight there. Um, but there are other times, especially after a long conversation, and I'm looking at you, different endings of the game, where we have to listen to a whole lot of conversation just to pick one other option. Anyway, so, obviously, remember this time, as we're just going to go through the same path we've done last time, of course, we need to make no mistakes. So, left on the D-pad to get your detector out, and you just have to avoid all the bright green-ness. Maybe that's why Dr. Gorski, not to mention the Alliance. Well, if we're looking for something on this planet, this could be it. These structures form entire multi-story complexes. They look like a city. Are you saying that... No, no. There's no point in jumping to conclusions yet. One more, Alison. Huh? That's all Gorski has left of oxygen, at best. And at worst? He's just finishing it up. Though it all depends on his activity. If I remember correctly, there was a risk of methane poisoning. Yes, sir. What's going on? Just a sec. I need to get... I need to... I need to get out. So again, don't panic, that first one is automatic. So just wait a second until the detection point gets all of the brittle structures, the skittle brittle sk sk structures. Again, don't go yet, there we go. So that's what they should be looking like. So it's literally a case of just following, taking your time, go very carefully. And obviously you are gonna wanna be walking on the bits that aren't incredibly bright green. So go to the right, but don't celebrate just yet because we do have um, another one of those brittle structures in order to get through. And it'll be coming up very, very, here it is. Right, so <laughs> do the same thing. You can, you can kind of see them um, light up there, but again, it's obviously easier with the detector. So again, detect your way through, try not to fall. If you do fall, again, just reload the last checkpoint. I should move. Oh, there's no time. <sighs> so once we climb up a couple of times, that achievement should now unlock. Again, providing you made no mistakes, didn't fall. 
You were all good. There we go. So we can now head to the left. We have found the abandoned stuff. And yeah. Ah, you're silly, silly Dr. Roast Potato. Nah, we've already done that, haven't we? Uh, so you can, again, have a look at things if you want. Um, again, it's all for just story related story stuff. Otherwise, let's crack on. We're going to go effectively um, straight down. See towards all the big massive pipes right here. We've found some footprints as well. So we are almost there. Now this part can get slightly confusing because it, a lot of it looks, would you believe, the same. But we go straight down. You can see some handprints right there. Um, so we are getting close, but again, this can be very confusing. Yes, sir. You heard correctly. I'm afraid anyway, continue on down. Go to the right-hand side. There was a little split path there. Um, so just continue on downwards. And no, nah, there's no passage there. So we will have to nip it back through. So effectively now, when you turn around, we're going to go to the right-hand side now. And there we go. We can follow Mr. Luna Bra himself, herself, whatever. Um, but we can't actually jump down. Um, but he's just shown us that there's some equipment there. So again, once we have dealt with this little bit, we can effectively just head down. So turn to the left and now go to the right. Go to the right again. Now there is another little structure here, but obviously this doesn't count for the achievement. But of course, if you don't fall, then that would be, I mean, that would make it easy. If you do fall, you can literally just follow the left-hand side path anyway. So you will all get to Dr. Gorski um, either way if you get to this point or if you fall. It does not matter. We can be good to go. So continue heading downwards. This time we can actually jump down. Yeah. Oh, well, that was... Uh, um, what's the word? Well, since I don't know it, let's carry on. Get out of the way! Stupid robot bird. Again, continue on down. We are getting somewhere, I promise. <laughs> I'm not last. I'm not last. So, uh, continue. You can actually go through the gap here. Or, I believe you can continue right. That's what I was actually trying to get at. Yeah, so Dr. Gorski should be just ahead of us. So slip through the crackle in the wall. And he's going to be around us here. So again, any dialogue option is all good, but we'll continue forwards. Come on, you son of a biscuit. Yeah, biscuit style. Take a right. No, take a left. Sorry. I was at the wrong bit because there is Gorski. So, finally, man, he must have some incredible upper body strength. He's holding on for dear life. Anyway, this is just a case of checking all his vitals as we have done with the other doctors. And then we'll need to pick him up and take him outside. Gorski! Gorski! Look at me! His eyes are closed. Is he breathing? He's alive, but barely. Did he react in any way? Saturation is within the lower range. Risk of tissue hypoxia. And the reactions? Gorski! Come on! Calm down, Doctor. Get him out of there. The probe's already looking for a landing site. <sighs> okay. Let me just... Him. Uh, out. Uh, done. He's out. Uh, I activated his SOS. You should pick up a transmission with his parameters, sir. Well? No, nothing. The transmitter in the suit must be too weak. Should I retrieve his booster from the backpack? have to get him out first. Phew, he's out. 
<laughs> ah, that's what nobody says. So this is another important dialogue in order for the save everyone achievement, if you can. So we're going to have to choose this specific dialogue option, and it means I have to get him oxygen first. So why I have to get him oxygen? Obviously, if you choose the other option, he pretty much, uh, blip, he's out of it, and then you'll have to replay the game again. So now choose, I'll give him mine. I'll give him my tank. Negative. I won't allow it, Yasna. If you faint, the doctor won't carry you. The membrane looks intact. And then, of course, for the final dialogue bit here, you need to give Gorski your oxygen. So it's the Y button again. Give Gorski your oxygen. Somehow, nothing happens to you. Um, but everything happens to Gorskly. So there we go. Now, any dialogue options from here are all good. Please go ahead. After, con after careful consideration, I gave Gorski my tank. We still don't know when you'll send the lander, so I, I can't leave him without oxygen. Shit. Doctor, I explicitly told you not to. Never mind. Let's hope Artie can finish the job if you're both unconscious. in the open already? Sort of. Yes. Once you set up the transmitter, I should start the seat. It's okay, to, I, I, I'm underground. It's hard to determine my exact location. Novik, do you copy? Base, come in. I'm sending an SOS. Anyone, please. Okay. Stay calm. Just... Keep it together. Heartbeat's racing, but saturation hasn't dropped below the tissue norm. Not yet, at least. <laughs> well, as if things couldn't get any better, somehow she tumbles down this whole big massive ting and ends up in Caveland. Not good, yeah, not good. So, now we're stuck in a cave, and now we have to crap our pants to get out. Not not literally, that was more figuratively. -ly. Anyway, um, quite the linear path, first of all. Again, in a little bit, it does get a little bit easy to get lost, so, of course, pay attention to what I'm doing, what I'm telling you, where I'm going, what I'm telling you to do. Uh, otherwise, for now, it is just taking your time, like crapping your astronaut suit, and... Uh, 
that's about it. Now we really in the hallucinating now. Uh, so this is Cr uh, Dr. Carrot. Um, but um, yeah, he's just a fragment, fragment of our imagination, isn't he? So um, yeah, you're going to see how Yasna was all like, oh my God, I'm so stuck. What am I going to do? And then she just gets up and we can go to the left anyway. So always check your surroundings before resigning to defeat. Unfortunately, there is no time for pleasantries. We need to get out of here now. Hey, not so fast. I have some questions. Like to guys, No, not so left. Should be easier from there. Good one. I'm not going anywhere until you explain how you found me. Then I guess you will die, because I refuse to waste time on explanations. Your choice, Yasna. Asshole. Besides, it'd be alright if she fell a little bit. She just smashed through about 16 wooden platforms on the way down to breaking her back. You know, just a couple of feet down and you'd be fine. Anyway, now it is time to get out of Dodge. Which is going to take a little bit longer than you originally think. So, again, for now, there's only one way to go and that's through Trudy Cave. Hello, my name is Trudy, Trudy Cave. I can't stand this dreadful silence. And what should I be afraid of? So this is where it can get quite easy to get lost, because you think you'd be just nipping off straight and that's it, but no. When we get here, we're going to take a little left. And we're going to be sticking with the left path. The right path here has nowhere to go, so you just need to go around it. There we go. Reason in the act of futile heroism. Gorski isn't dead. That's why I left him my damn tank. Yeah, it might as well be. Do you really think giving him oxygen was enough? Something attacked you up there. Odds are, it got Gorski as well. We'll check and come back for him. Novik should be monitoring his parameters after all. Yeah, about that. You shouldn't trust everything the old man says. He only tells us what he sees fit. Huh? What do you mean? Doesn't matter now. Let's focus on getting out of this maze. Is your equipment operational? Nothing damaged? I think so. Flares are wet, though. What equipment do you have on you? Procedural minimum or more? <sighs> 
the telemeter. Trip has slow down. I need to rest. Nah, rest is for the dead. <laughs> against time, Yasna. We're constantly fighting for life, Yasna. Enough of this nonsense. I don't want to fight anymore. I, I don't want to fight. All right, Yasna. Have it your way. At least you're agreeing with me for once. Now let me close my eyes for a moment. Rest as much as you need. You did everything you could. But even that wasn't enough. You have the right to finally give up. No. No, not over. I haven't given up yet. Can you walk? Yeah. Probably. I just need to catch my breath. Mm. One second thought. I imagine there are worse places to die. It's rather peaceful, actually. Just close your eyes and let yourself go. Fall asleep. Okay. Well, I'm getting up. Turns out I prefer to live than let you talk me to death. I can do it. I won't. I mean, probably would have been easier to just, you know, have a little bit of a sleep and then continue on your way rock climbing and stuff. But anyway, that's just uh, my professional opinion, which, of course, I am not a professional. So you head to the right, you see Dr. Carrot right there. Now, this bit confused me like hell. Basically, we've got to turn directly around from where we are with Dr. Carrot. So if we turn to the right, you can see some skull bones on the wall. So you're effectively turning to the right and around. And this is where we are going. For some reason, that took me a few more minutes than I'd care to admit to find. We're further up as well. What do you think that means? Is it obvious? Dinosaurs? Once we build so there's two left exits to take first. Um, here's the first one, which we're not going to go down. It is the second left we're going to go down here. Until something got rid of it. Quite effectively. Or it didn't allow organisms ashore. Perhaps stop them from leaving... So this little part there is a bit linear, so as long as you see the moray... That's more skeletons. Do -do 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 -do. It means we're on the right path. So, congrats. <laughs> and it nips. Nip nips. Um, big nips. So, <laughs> just continue on while I try and gather some sanity back from my own brain. You know a lot. So, we ne next up, we're going to take a left here. And then we are going to see Dr. Carrot once again straight in front of us, which means all we've got to do is effectively now go to the right and all the way around. And ta-da! He's not there, which, well, that would make a whole lot of sensei, wouldn't it, sensei? Of course. We all are. You have distinct memory traces of us, you know, in your brain. That's not what I'm asking about. I know, but there's no definitive answer. We can only hope that you won't forget us when it's all over. So little, yet so much. I don't want to forget, Crowther. I, I really don't. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Oh my god, finally. So, climb up to the left. Get your buns out of there, Huns. Ha! Finally! Again. So after all, I can't go with you anymore. Crowder, forgive me for my rudeness. I had to be a prick. 
to pull you out of that. Unfortunately, now my body is being cool. Water and nitrogen and empty hearts. So I took them off. This is not the way, but if so, I should tell you. SOS, receiving your vitals. Base, I report that the comms are back. I repeat, the line is working again. Finally! Yes, love. You can't even imagine. It's really good to hear your voice again, Doctor. Sir, I saw Crowther. Yes, sir, are you saying <laughs> what? Uh, I don't quite understand myself. All right. So this is an important, very important dialogue choice coming up. So basically, we we find these machines, um, very deadly. But what you need to pick is, um, well, an anything with that bit. But it's when we get over to the other side and we've got an option to say, I know what that thing is or what the hell is that. So for the next one, you have to choose, I know what that thing is. And that'll get us the Alliance achievement. Oh, well, a little bit later on. But you can actually miss this one by choosing the wrong dialogue option. So make sure to choose, I recognize that damn ting. If you choose the other up, there we go. And that'll pop you the achievement straight away, the Alliance. Uh, not later, as I just said. If you chose the other option, what is that? The achievement won't unlock. So important there to choose that one. And then we're all good. And then we will go back on ourselves and just sneak through before we're about to get attacked by Am Amni Map Map. Excellent. Don't stop yet, though. The greater the distance between you and this machine, the better. How is it possible that the Alliance machine got here before us? I'd like to know myself. If our intel's incorrect and Invincible already landed up, they would have a huge advantage over us. So why won't they confront our ship head on? <sighs> Instead, they're waiting. I'm stuck. I can't move. Oh, it's coming at me. It's getting closer. It's going to crush me. I've got nowhere to run. I'm going to die here after all. Luna? No! Luna just saved your life. Oh my god. Anyway, when you can have a look in front of you there, we're going to find some pictures. And again, obviously, as we've been doing, look at all the pictures, and then we'll be able to back out. Also a switch. Probably from the registry. Can you get the record? Let's see. Yes, right, sir. The Alliance is indeed already on the planet. They even managed to set up a fill base. How could headquarters have got it so wrong? According to intelligence, the Invincible is not due to arrive for another 14 days. Uh, I guess we should ask them back home. And that's me. Wow. It really did almost flatter me. Probe. It... it distracted the Antimat. Well, that was lucky, wasn't it? I tell you what, nobody would survive. To be fair, if I went on a planet, I wouldn't survive at all. I'd take one step out and probably float and forget to put my helmet on or something. I'd do something stupid, I would. Uh, so go ahead, there is our beloved little probe who just saved our life. Um, so what we're going to need to do is... We need to have a look at its pictures as well, and then interact with the thing at the bottom, the core, the probe core. 
You could say that since I found the probe, I haven't been alone. I'm sorry, yes. Maybe it can still be rebuilt. Anyway, you're not entirely alone. You don't have to comfort me. I'm a little sad. The probe was a good companion, but that's all. Sometimes you have to allow yourself a moment of weakness to regain strength. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Hit cool down. Are you talking about the probe call? Huh. Well, they say in order to win over a person, you have to still their heart. Looks like a nice uh, Mamma Mia probe of pizza, huh? Uh, or something or other. So, anyway, it's not. So, uh, let's go. There's straight in front of us. That's where the uh, Amni Tap, or whatever it's called, I forgot, just came and tried to destroy us. So now we can get the hell out of here. So, let us continue onwards and downwards. Yeah, cheers, mate. I know that. Stormfront is approaching your location. Now of all times. I know, Doctor. But please muster up a little more strength. Let's not forget that the Alliance is in the vicinity. Wait a minute. Do you have any specific expectations of me? Since I'm nearby their troops. It's hard to call them specific. We need to learn more. You're missing the most important thing, sir. We still have to save Gorski. I, I don't know what your silence means. Uh, I was going to tell you later. I'm really sorry. What? His readings. No. No, don't finish. That, that's impossible. You did absolutely everything you could. Unfortunately, some... Oh, damn it. The storm's getting worse. I did nothing. Just nothing. <sighs> By the way, how are you feeling? Are you asking about? I mean the lack of your oxygen tank. So, how are you feeling? Oh my god, delicious rain! So if you need a drink, surely this rain... It's just rain, isn't it? It can't be poisoned or anything. Anyway, there is a rover in front of us, and unlike other space exploration games, these ones actually work, rather than, oh, it doesn't work, and then you have to go on an hour-long hunt to find... You know, like a missing tire or something. Uh, so you'll actually have to interact with the door first. And then you can interact with the oxygen tank. So there we go, that sorts you out. Now obviously, because we've got to do a second playthrough anyway, I obviously went through the other options. So nobody made it live in my second playthrough. Um, obviously it gets a bit uh, tough for old Yasna, because... Well, everyone dies. So, yeah, and we could have given Gorski the tank and... Well, that's for another playthrough, isn't it? So, anyway. Once you've got the oxygen tank, you can pretty much just get straight in. Um, I mean... Yeah, you get a rain down. It's gotta be uncomfortable. So you can have a look at some things, but we'll do that in just a minute. So we can just have a look, uh, hold the right trigger here in order to look at the uh, on clicker majigger. Pop that on, and job done. There we go. So we will press the right button in order to drive, and the left bumper to brake and reverse. Um, you know the driving's easy enough, but this is the only thing that we can see. So uh, <laughs> it can be a little bit difficult on times to see where the hell and we're going. Uh, for now, though, it's not so bad. It's literally just straightforward until we effectively get a cutscene going. I'm not worried. I'm a goddamn oasis of peace. And there are exceptions, you know. Such as the windshield shattering at high voltages. Doesn't stress me out at all. 
Another split path coming up. Make sure to take the left-hand side path. There you go. I almost completely monged that one up one again. Mosh that up. Mash that up. So we're going to have obviously more conversation, we're going to have to do some things as well here, he's literally just going to ask to find some things, so the first one is the Emmet 2001 number right in front of us, the badge, then if you look up he'll need to uh, have a look at the black box, again very easy because you should see all the interaction markers, um, so yeah just follow along. Don't be a dong. I have the box, but it's all locked up. Really? Uh, they must have changed the equipment because I have no information about a key. Where did you even get a catalog of their gear from, sir? And anyway, it doesn't matter. What should I do? One second. I need to think. Don't know if this can help. But the Alliance labels black boxes as data loggers. Eureka, cable access. Look for something resembling a socket, a plug. I think I have something like that. Then you can connect to the probe's brain there. And presto. It won't work. These inputs are not compatible with Commonwealth plugs. From the outside, our equipment is different, but inside we have the same guts, so to speak. The cable on the back of the box should already fit. Same guts, eh? Just like with humans. <sighs> okay, it's in. Just a moment. Well done, Doctor. I'm receiving a signal. So, what now? You can finally rest. It'll take me a while to dig through all the records. The rover was connected to a base. The one from the slides? Uh, most probably. So once we have turned the on button and put the um, put it to number two base, we're going to take a lie down. You can have a chat and a discussion if you want, but I just end up pressing the X button in order to go to sleep twice. Let's just rest, man. It's been a it's been a rough day. Thank <laughs> you. 
no good. Don't get a break. What is that this time? Oh, wait. Astrogator, can you explain to me what I'm hearing right now? This is a recording from the rover. The Alliance has apparently broken the encryption of our radio channel. Oh, bollocks. So, so what do we do? We need to change the frequency and encryption key. What's the point? As soon as you give me a new channel, they will overhear us and change it as well. Just look at the probe's brain. Luna? What's with... Oh, so we got some stalky stalkies on our taily wheelies, huh? Right, so, uh, basically, in order to finish this tiny little puzzle, you've got to see the lights on the dashboard. There it is, on the probe pizza thing. So, that's obviously the third air channel, because it has three lights. Now, when we do that, basically, you're going to get um, a couple now that are going to flash, as you can see, it's for the encryption keys. So, the first one is... So as you can see, it's going to be three, and then it's going to be two and seven. So, yeah, so it's three, two, seven, but that's how it would go. It would come up with the first one, and then two lights again. So three, two, actually, this one's going to be two, one, four. <laughs> I thought I uh, let it play long enough to actually show you, but it's not. But that one was uh, two, one, four. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. But that's how you solve the puzzle anyway. You're literally just looking at the uh, lights on the probe pizza dashboard. But there's no way I'm going to sleep now. Besides, nothing's stopping me anymore. The storm has subsided. All right, let's not risk evacuating directly from the city. It should be safer outside its perimeter. I took the liberty of looking through the photos of the nearby area. Everything north and east of your location looks relatively safe. So? Should I go back to the ship? That's an odd question. Of course you should come back. Now even more than ever. Very concerned for your safety, Doctor. Uh, no need to be. I'm fine. So we are coming up very soon where we have to take a path. Now the road to the Alliance base will get us effectively the majority of the rest of the achievements. But going straight to the landing base will get us the one sort of ending achievement. Um, and it'll come up in just a bit. We do, have, we do actually have to exit here um, and basically uh, search for a marking that we can pop down. But if we can, when we just come up to it after this part, if you can, try and make a backup save. I know on Xbox, for some reason, it's kind of annoyingly difficult. Um, I, I think on PlayStation, it's a lot easier. But on Xbox, it is quite a bit more annoyingly difficult. Um, but if you can, make a backup save. Because basically, when we do all of the endings, um, as we just check the indicated area here, so get out your telemeter king. So when we do all the endings, instead of um, replaying the game from the very beginning, if you can get to your backup save now, that'll just literally save two hours of your next playthrough. Again, if you can't, you know, it's it's no worries. You will just have to play from it from the very beginning like I did. Um, but yes, so again, like I said, we are going to start driving to the point now where the path splits in two and... The choices matter in terms of achievements. So going to the landing base will basically get you the last ending, effectively. Um, whereas the road to the Alliance base will get us a lot more achievements. You didn't let me finish, sir. Didn't me finish, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I'll let you finish next time. But 30 seconds is all I need. So yes, from this point, if you can make a backup save, do it right now. And then hopefully you can just come back to this point after you finish the game later on. So... Road to the landing zone, road to the Alliance base. Of course, for the first one, we're going to head to the right and go to the Alliance base. Now, what's even more annoying is... Um, I'll just spoil it for you now, because why the hell not? If you do go to the landing zone, basically, lander crashes, and then we've just got to go through the Alliance base anyway. But we do 
you will miss out on some achievements if you choose to go to the landing zone first, so... <laughs> that's nice, huh? I have several hours of travel ahead of me. You can still turn back. No. And if you try to convince me otherwise, I'll just turn the radio off. Fine. I'll stop insisting. Please just understand the position you've put me in. As a commander, now I have to decide whether to risk detection by the Alliance. I'll understand if you find it necessary to leave. I would do it if I were you. Well, then you're lucky I'm me. Please don't turn off your radio. I'm not going anywhere. their coordinates. Yes, now. Yes? I understand that no matter what I say it won't change your mind. But please be careful. Just observe them from a distance. And only then take action. I will be cautious. Like always. Just because I'm acting against your orders doesn't mean I intend to be foolish, sir. It's comforting in its own way that even in an act of insubordination you want to remain professional. I'll let you know when you cross their perimeter. Once you've crossed, hide the rover. Behind a bend, or under a ledge. Telemetry observation will be vital. Once we know the camp's weaponry situation, we'll decide what to do next. Copy that. Hey, what was that? I've set up a warning signal. Now you're near enough that they can see the rover. It was getting real bumpy around here. Whoa. Uh, so, sorry, just some more Ace Ventura quotes because... Well, why the hell not? So we're gonna just jump out under here. <coughs> Excuse me, what the heck happened to my voice? We are just gonna jump out here, and don't worry, there are no people about or anything. There's no jump scares or anything like that. We're just gonna basically scope out the place. We also get the field base for finding the field base. Makes sense. Um, so you're gonna have to look at a transporter and uh, about three or four things here in order to just ha uh, have a look at. Missions with a large crew, transport modules were an integral part of the field camp. Remind me, how many crew members were they supposed to send on the Invincible? Over a hundred. Great. They have a second antimat. As if the first one wasn't enough. Is it active? Uh, probably not, but Proton alone knows. What about people? Can you see anyone? Not yet. I see someone. Just one? For now, yes. Some object is flying over their base. Can you tell me more? It's 15, 20 meters high. It has an upright silhouette. And it looks like a, a balloon. Uh, it could be a balloon. And that doesn't surprise you? Not everything that flies needs jet engines. What markings does it have? RB1. What does it mean? It's an ID number. Denotes an advanced scout balloon. How far from you is it? Around 400. All right, there we go, drive. All done. So after we've scoped it out, basically you have to scope out this part, uh, this part because... Novik will basically stop the machine, um, stop the rover, and we have to do it anyway. So let us just continue onwards and downwards. Sorry, a little bit of an edit there. I done, I don't know what I done. Something stupid, probably. So we'll just continue to head down where the human silhouette was. As it turns out, it was not a human silhouette. Uh, stick with the right hand side, and you can see this excavator. Now, don't go down this way. Um, you actually needed to go around the excavator and to the left. So, do apologize about this one. Now, I'm just like, ah, oh, stupid son of a monkey bow. So, yes, uh, apologies about this. Just turn around and we need to head where the excavator. We need to basically just go to the right of that and around it. What kind of spy exposes themselves to direct questions? A desperate one, Doctor.
I feel like there was probably an easier way to just get through that, but uh, yeah, sorry, making your life difficult for no reason. So here we go, big Drill Magoni, the big D R I L D O three thousand, as it were. The Wargasm song goes. By the way, if you have not listened to Wargasm UK, do it. Sensational. Uh, if we have a look to the left, we are going to see that there is a force field, so we can't nip through that way. But we do need to interact with it anyway in order to have a little bit of a chat. So then we'll turn around from here and then at the end of the road to your left again. Nothing will get through. Is there an opening from the other side? I'll see. And then when we get to this little piece of poisonous water, take a left and left again. So just between these two sort of big rocks here, this is where we're off. Climbing up and up and up and up here. And here we are then in a base of something. Don't worry, the anti mat will not be alive. Uh, so what we need to do then is not park it in the middle of this part which I done on every run through that I done on this actually um, but just behind these bits of trailers here is where we need to go basically where the human silhouette slash it was just a robot is parked so better for your safety if they make the first move if you really don't see anyone right okay so we're gonna jump out we are going to interact with the robot and just be like ah make out thank God. And then if we have a look to the right of where that robot was, there is one of these open trailers with an actual door open. So obviously, again, apologies, I went into the wrong one, but it was just to the right of where the robot was. Okay, right, so this is... Yeah. Again, nobody here, so don't worry about this too much. But what we effectively need to do, again, you can go search in and have a look at some story things, but effectively, for this part, all we have to do is, where we enter, just continue going straight until Yasna says about reaching the central, uh, con uh, the co central command. And then we basically have to um, get a flying drone to get a part. And there's an achievement for that as well, Get for getting two flying drones and getting them to park up um and then we basically have to turn the force field off so that's the effectively the main bits what we have to do so obviously anything else where i'm going is literally just for story related purposes which i wish i hadn't done now so my apologies but effectively like i said we are just going where you enter we're just going straight until we hit the central command because now I look like I'm just back at the beginning, so. I'm entering the next module. I guess it's a bio lab. The scientists excavated some animal remains and reconstructed their hypothetical appearance. I found similar remains underground right after finding Gorski. I wasn't sure if it was my imagination or not. Now there's no doubt. So long, long ago, reptilian organisms roamed the surface of Regis Three. They had the opportunity to study organisms preserved in the ocean. Wow. They found the same species of fish. Did they confirm the similarity to those on Earth? Yes. Lots of similarities. Hmm. It started rotting. It? Uh, the fish. In a bacteria-free environment. So if we've quite finished looking at this, we can now go ahead and, as I said, look for the central command, which ain't going to be here. So if we continue on to the right, and eventually we will make it. Um, it, it looks tiny, but it's actually bloody massive inside, mate. So again, if you want to have a look at the diagrams and everything, be my guest. Um, but again, it's all just for story rather than actual achievements or anything. Relatively thin layers of rock, but compared to the rest of the continent, 
The deposits in this region are significantly younger. They conducted a soil survey 500 meters deep. Oh, that's a big piece of history, so to speak. What did they find? The range of their ground measurements covers a much wider area. To my eye, it seems they use advanced sonar. What they dug up here stretches for tens of kilometers. What do you mean? What's in the ground, Doctor? Metal deposits. Those structures. We still don't know where they came from. In such a peculiar form. Millions of years ago, life was abundant on the planet. That would match our assumptions. Yeah. Subdelta 92 class planets have very favorable conditions for the development of a biosphere. So what happened? Did they draw any conclusions? Unbelievable. Not only do we... Okay, we've had a look at some diagrams. We're all good. We're all astounded and like, oh my god, fish and skiff. So now we can finally go ahead and grab the, or look for the central command. Let's finally do that, is it? So, there's obviously only one way to go, and that's straight down. Yeah, and then continue on straight. Sorry, I somehow got stuck on that for some reason. And finally, to the left here, this is the central command part, what we need. So, we're actually going to get the next achievement, I Leave No Man Behind, just as we pick up this receipt in a little bit. Um, because there's obviously no other men, slash women that we need to find. Uh, so we'll come back to this part in just a bit, but if we completely turn around, you can see this little monitor on the left. Now, uh, basically the switches are sort of drone cameras. So what we need to do, I think it's the third one, I think that we need to use. And then you can just press left stick to move and obviously the uh, right bumper slash left bumper to ascend and descend. Um, but you put it up to number two, you have a look at the screen, and if it doesn't move, then just go back, and I'm sure then that it is number three that we need to get to. It's got a weak signal. Must be too far away. One is a flying unit. Some sort of probe. Flying over the base? Correct. Can you extract data from it? Sure. Never too much data. Especially in the current situation. But it will actually tell you where the landings, uh, the landing site is, so just follow the site of the lands, lands it, and site your sightings. Empty. Everywhere, just... I landed the probe. Gonna check it in a spare moment. They may have discovered something important. And there we go then. That'll be one out of two um, for landing one of those flying operating probes. There's actually three opportunities. Uh, so if you somehow managed to miss the first two, there is another one that you can get. Um, so now what we can do is we'll turn around and we'll interact with the receipt, the big receipt coming out of the big machine. And again, after a little bit of conversation, we will get the I Leave No Man Behind achievement for evacuating all the crewmates to the ship. The guy survived. Someone saved him. Interesting. Coordinates changed uh, upwards, which indicates he was evacuated by air. Huh. The alarm signal broke off high above the ground. One, eight, five, six, one. Seven, five, four. Yes, it's Gorski. You said he died during the night. Correct, I did. I couldn't let you go back to those ruins. Did you send the lander? When? While you were still on there we go. So all's well that ends well. Obviously, if you didn't um, get anyone on the landers, this achievement will not unlock here. So obviously, hopefully you have. 
And all is good. So we're not actually going to get a, another achievement for a little while now. So all we need to do is have a look at this big old map. Uh, we effectively have to interact with everything. Field base 1, field base 2, the research arenas, the, pic uh, the research areas, the pictures, research area 2, research area 3. Just interact with everything that you can until the talking stops. Including dates. I'm all ears. Day Zero, landing place. Their main ships in sector AQ-28. The Invincible? What? They didn't move it? Huh, seems so. I'll try to track it down. Please tell me what else is in there. Our like us, they became interested in the ocean. They got there on the seventh day. Uh, quite late. I guess they weren't in a hurry. Before setting up this base, they were stationed not far from... They conducted research and during excavations found... Oh, you won't guess. Metal structures. So we had no chance to outrun them. Yeah. And they were already at an advanced stage of works when we were still in orbit. In the end, they sent a convoy to a neighboring sector. So, that was their last move? Well, there's no information about their return. Maybe I'll find them there. Highly probable. Do you know what the current day... So, now we can move out. We're going to actually head up the ladder now. We need to get rid of the force field. And the only way to do that is by force. Thunder force. Or just um, interact with the lever on the top. That's probably as forceful as we're getting. So, as soon as we get up, we'll just turn around to the right, I believe... And there's going to be one obvious lever switch that we need to use. And that be that. Still there. I'll continue to search their base. Force fills down. I open the passage. We can follow the convoy route now. When you're ready, Doctor. Force field is down. I repeat, force field is down. I repeat, buffet is ready. I repeat, the buffet is ready. That's just what every DJ says at a wedding, isn't it? Oh, buffet's ready. Good old Peter K joke. Right. Out we go to the left, beautiful. Now we do actually have to find and interact with the uh, flying operator probe, which should just be right in front of us, right next to the rover where we parked. So interact with it and have a look at all the pictures. Ah, bingo. Yes? Found it. They're still on the planet. Didn't fly away. Good to know. Thank you. First images from this area. If it's been flying long enough, it may store important information. Unfortunately, apart from my arrival, the probe didn't record much. So it's been flying only recently? I think so. And what seems like kind of forever on this part, we can now take our leave of absence for Christmas. Goodbye, Regis 3, it's Christmas time. So, we can continue straight and start heading down the hill. This is where the force field was, of course. Now, there's a couple of ways to go. We're going to take a left. And then continue on our merry way. So, again, you should be on the right track because... Well, in fact, this is where the force field was, sorry. It's obviously got the Energo bot right there. So, that's when you know you're on the correct path. I'm leaving the base. Going after the convoy. Down you go, oh bright sun. Time to let the night in. For my legs are heavy. Okay, everything looks tempting, but what we're going to do now, the left is the way we're supposed to go in terms of the story. Uh, but we're actually going to take a 
uh, take a right in just a minute. So we're going to basically head straight. And we are now going to take a slight left. You can see the crashed spaceship. The, cra uh, the uh, saucer. I found a flying red saucer. And then we'll continue on our way. Now, basically, again, I think these are just uh, just for story. Um, but you're going to see a robot on the left-hand side. Now, I actually don't do this bit. But basically, if you interact with a robot, you... Um, he will, uh, you'll find out what its um, actual name is, and then you'll just, uh, he'll basically say, uh, human in danger, we just got to go and find the human who is already deader than a dead thing. Deader than Machine Gun Kelly's career. Or, I, d I don't know if you know what he's changed his name to, Vampire Bloodsucker. Douche licker. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to uh, just get out here. We're going to interact with a couple of things, the holes, the bowls, the moles, and the blocks of rocks. And then we'll just get back in our car and continue onwards. Not necessarily. In these blocks, there are inorganic objects. Solid, metal, sharp-edged lumps. So, we're basically now going back the way we came. Um, and in, in order to obviously go um, straight for the story. So we'll just turn around here once we've done that. Again, I, it was a couple of things I went through where I thought you needed it for the story progression. And then as it turns out, you probably didn't. So um, this is obviously where you can have a look at the robot and go and find the dead master or whatever. So again, I do apologize. Um, I get that it can be slightly frustrating, but it was just one of those games where... It did genuinely trick me into thinking you have to do this in order to proceed, but sometimes it's never the case. So anyway, we're going to take a right as we get from here. We're going to go past the flying saucer this time and continue straight. Status? What's new? Well, nothing really. At least not in the last five seconds, sir. Huh? Right. Thank you. Well, I've got to the place where they were digging. And into the next area. So again, this is just going to be a case of having a look at some tings. Um, I mean, that's some pretty big ships. Damn, it's not even erect yet. Uh, uh, did I just say that out loud? Anyway, uh, what you need to do, have a look over by these machines. And we're just going to interact with a couple of interactable interactions that we can interact with. Um, it'll be the machine, having a look at the cold, cold ground below. And then we're actually going to get another achievement for playing a bit of ping. A bit of ping. Stands out from the rest. It's not a part of the structures, but rather an independent, autonomous machine. Also metal? Yes. So, a robot? Or something else that finally looks familiar? Well... It looks a lot more like a robot than the other structures. The excavator. Right, so once we've done that, we are now going to turn back around. Again, this one can be easily missed, because you can pretty much just drive straight through this part um, after you've done the excavation bit. So we go in where we've parked the rover, go into this little uh, trailer. The, again, the only thing in here is the game of ping. Now, any old person will see this and know exactly what I mean. Um, it's kind of like tennis, except it's not really tennis. It's, uh, you know, you know, ping, uh, but we'll get to it in a minute. So as you go straight, you can come into this bio lab and again, you can interact with the blackboards if you want. Um, but again, these are just for, uh, story notes rather than story progression. Were they successful? It looks promising. If they had spent a little more time, they would surely have come up with something. So there's only one way to go. And it's pretty much straight now. As we go to the left, we go straight here. Continue to the right. Go through. And here is Ping. So this is the game of Ping. So obviously, it's literally just a case of you've got to obviously hit the ball. And to get the achievement, you have to basically get at least 20 points. And then you can die. And then job done. Now, for whatever particular reason, I actually lost after about... I got about 16 points. 
lost the first time, um, and then it glitched out, and I had to actually reload the last checkpoint, do all that excavation stuff, and then come here again. So, again, not too far, but a bit of an inconvenience if it does uh, sort of bug out on you a little bit. But anyway, obviously it gets faster as you uh, go on, so just be careful. But get to 20 points, and the Got Lost achievement will be yours. Yes, no? Everything's all right? Yes, yes. I just need a moment to think. No. As soon as you find something... I'll report it. No worries, sir. Now, how far to that convoy? Oh, not far. Even if I make a few stops, it won't take long. And I tell you what, it does start getting quite tense, doesn't it? It does get tense. Knees weak, arms are heavy, mom spaghetti. Sweat nervous on the sweater already. I completely balls that lighting up there from Eminem. But anyway, um <laughs> once you have done the game of ping, got lost again, achievement has unlocked. We can now carry on. Um and it's effectively just a straight drive. Knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on the sweater already. Mom spaghetti. That's what I tried saying. And it always gets that feeling if you're going for an achievement like that where you've got to get a high score or something and it's getting close and close. It, uh, yeah, and you start getting the mom spaghetti vomit on your sweat already, don't you? Right, so continue on upwards anyway. That's all there is to have a look for on that bit. I've already covered most of the convoy route. I'm entering a more enclosed area. A ravine, to be precise. I see. Can I count on a tactical report? Of course. A simple analysis of the situation won't hurt anyone. Hmm. That's for sure. Okay, so we're going to have to stop now with this observation point. Basically... There's two plans of attack that you can do. You can either go continue driving straight forward in order to head to the lines base straight on, or we need to go to the side path in order to take a little stealthier approach. Now, what we're actually going to do is take said side path. Um, now, I did have a look and I, I saw that someone said if you take the side path, you, you will miss a collectible. That's not the case at all. Um, so you will still get everything that is needed but we basically have to go down the side path in order to get the convoy list achievement for locating every single person and object from the convoy list so as i said have a look um have a look up and you can see the side path that is the way that we'll be going so you're gonna have to do a little bit of climbing to get there but it's all good it is the correct path i leave that to your judgment though it's your call yes all right I'll try to get there via the side path.
this mission drags on so much. Sometimes I think you're gonna take off without me, sir. <laughs> Don't count on it, Doctor. I'm not going anywhere. Radiation level is rising rapidly. Yasna, be careful of radiation and of other people. Just. I found a way to the convoy. What might interest you, sir, is that it appears to be a mechanically drilled tunnel. Circular, precise. I'm more curious about what's on the other end. I'm more curious about what's on the right way. Uh, uh, uh. Yasna, you alright? So, as I said, we need to locate 21 items and things, and the first five are going to be in this area. So if we have a look here, you can see there is a cheeky bit of a dead body right there. So you'll know when you've listed something, when it's got that little note, notepad and pen icon, and it'll say that your journal's been updated. So make sure that it is. So that's the first one there. Turn around, go to the left. And you can see this first anti-mat, MAG-04. That is the second one. So again, just make sure it says journal updated again. And the third one is this next anti-mat, the MAG-03. So you can actually interact with it as well. But that, So that's three done already. Go to the right down this little, little cubby hole. And the fourth one is basically just this big trailer machine. There it is. So that is number four. And then uh, we're, go we're going to have a look at the anti mats pictures first, and then we're going to get the fifth one. So we will uh, have a look at the destroyed anti mat, and then we'll interact with the um, the cover. In fact, no, we're going for the fifth one first. So there we go. So there's the fifth one. Head completely buried. Unfortunate. So you should already be on five. Now we can interact with the recording cover, smash through the pictures as usual, and job done. So that should be two dead bodies, two anti-mats, and the one trailer in this area. What do we have here? They were preparing for departure. The convoy is heading somewhere. They're getting close to where I am now. They're here. Sending a probe. Oh, they're tunneling their way through. Looks like they found whatever they were looking for. And that on Those containers ended up in one of the transporters. Huh. Shame. Something's going on. Next slide. People rushing out of the tunnel. One of the anti mats has fired straight into the tunnel. There's nothing else. Only total panic. The second anti mat, that's what destroyed it. It's firing directly at the crew, shooting them one by one. Someone hid behind a rock. How do you know? Hiding from it made no difference. One of them's raising his hands. He's surrendering. If only a machine could take pity on him. With a proper programming, it could recognize such gestures, but it could never feel compassion. No. It, it killed him. Oh, fuck. Yes, no? The last photo is from a few moments ago. I'm on it. Bloody hell, so it's not dead after all. The machine that massacred the Alliance is still operational, and it could target you at any moment. Let's hope not. Perhaps it's best to hope. While moving away. If that's well, man, not ting, ain't that about a ting? Crap your pants ting, that one. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now proceed down the, um, 
I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to suggest what hole it looks like, but it is one long stinky hole. Quite close to the planet Uranus hole. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Here. I don't understand you, sir. The audio is breaking up. I'll get back to you once I reach the end. It's in Arctan. Coming at me. Right, so another couple of convoy lists to tick off first after the conversation, and you get your blurred vision back. This is hangover real kicking in now. Head about to burst. That's why you should never mix your drinks, kids. Mix <laughs> you mix your spirits, and you are gonna have a bad time. Anyway, um, so the first thing we'll do is interact with the robot walking around, and after we start chatting about the robot, then we can write down his journal number thing. There it is. So just on his back, so that should be journal updated and unlocked. Um, so that should be number six right there. Have a look up and interact with the metal bushes. Well, it goes in circles, using the same path. And then once we have done this, now we do need to actually interact with these bushes and everything uh, to progress the story a bit, so we can have a look at some bear bushes. <laughs> Damn, I didn't think I'd be looking at bear bushes in this one. Um, and then, finally, after the conversation, interact with the container. Now, we will continue onwards. There's going to be a, another body, which we are going to write down in our little journal. And it's pretty obvious where it is, because, you know, it's all right in front of us and dead and stuff. You actually need to uh, push him around and then uh, write him, write his name down or whatever it is. So give him a little push, and then make sure to interact with him again in order to get the journal entry updated. This body's different. There's no visible injuries. And what is the cause of death? Ah, oh, I don't know. It could be anything. Sepsis, internal bleeding, organ failure. Oh, I won't examine him now. Ah, oh, my head is killing me. So this is another important bit. Again, you can easily miss this one, but if you have a look up, in fact, no, you've got to do this anyway to progress the story, which I just realized. So we need to have a look at a few things then. The metal wall first. This is um, basically a part of the necroevolution achievement for naming all metal, metal structures discoveries as a form of the necroevolution. So you need to look at the metal wall. You need to then have a look at the roots. So basically, everything that you need to look for here, again, it's about three or four interactions we need to do. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. So all the bushes in this area, and there are plenty of them as I understand, appear to grow on the rock, but deep down their roots are embedded in metal. Perhaps you should take a closer look at them, Doctor. Can you please check them, yes, sir? Do you have anything specific in mind? Doctor, if it's all metal... Then I'll use a detector. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I actually forgot. So, whip out your metal detector from the pants of life. And uh, just on the left there, you should interact with and find the underground connections. There it is. Metal all round. Oh, my gosh. And then this will actually be part one out of two for the Necro Evolution achievement. So again, this is one that you can actually easily miss because it's not an obvious thing. Uh, just like the I Leave No Man Behind achievement and the Crowter one, um, where it just sort of pops. It's Again, it's very easy to just... So I'm not sure if it matters too much, but for the next dialogue option, I would say um, that it is possible. So, X, it is possible. We can't rule it out. And you say that as a biologist? I haven't heard you mention cells, membranes, organs, or green bodies, which leads me to one conclusion. That thing is not alive, Doctor. Oh, well, we're used to calling all life protonaceous, especially ourselves. But that's on us. The universe doesn't give a damn about our classifications. Yes, sir. 
Are you abandoning your profession? All you have learned, discovered, researched so far? I'm just opening up to the unknown. So yeah, I think that last dialogue option was important that she named a couple of the metal structures, I believe, anyway. So, after the um, tequila headache has started disbanding again, there we go, we can see clearly again. Um, let's just go ahead and follow the robot, and some unfortunate happenings are going to happen. So even though it has now been programmed to shoot everything and everyone, apparently it feels sorry for us since we are just a little old doctor. So somehow we win. Right, have a look at the slides. Do the same thing you'd be doing with the slides all through the game. Interact with everything on any picture. Keep flicking through everyone. <clears throat> I'm all is. You will agree that we were doing very well. Outstanding results. That's how it ought to end. Now there's going to be a little bit of conversation here, but basically when we can interact with the robot legs and talk to Novik about them, um, interact with those robot legs and you can see the opening to the left of where we are now. At the minute, it's it's uh, still a bit boiling, so we actually have to wait for that to cool down. And by the time we interact with those robot legs, it will have cooled down. And oh, it might. Those Piper potatoes, they ain't going to forgive you. I'm fully aware. All of it weighs heavily on my mind. Believe me, Doctor. So, what do we do now? Will you finally let me send Hopper for you? I... I can't just fly away. Now more than ever. I won't rest until I find out what happened to our people and what we can do to aid them. So, now we should be able to go through to the left. Should have cooled down by now, even though... As an astronaut, we could probably just climb over the rocks, but there we go. So another couple of convoy lists in order to blast out. The first one's going to be on this trailer here. Uh, Smoo 6 or something or other. And if we have a look inside the trailer, you can just see the n another dead body right there. So that should be two, the trailer and the body inside. So continue heading down. Here's a rover. So make sure to interact with the name, the ATR-12 at the top there. So that's another one. Plus, if we go inside, there's going to be a lot of dialogue and conversation uh, happening, but the next one is actually going to be the next body bro next to us. So uh, we can't actually interact with him just yet. So we will um, turn uh, turn everything on 
first of all, turn it. Don't burn it. Burn one, turn one. And put the base up to number two. There we go. And eventually, uh, after a bit more talking, so yeah, just interact with everything, and then eventually, when they start talking, you should then be able to interact with the body next to you and write down his journal name. So, let's hear it. Hello, base. This is Antka. Hello, Antka. Tess, look here. I can hear you. Reporting. 25th day of the mission, 7.15 a.m. We arrived. Huh. I saw it on the slides. We encountered a terrain obstacle, but it has been removed. You can skip ahead if you would. We've established permanent access to the extraction site, separated the material for research. Now we're securing the first transport. Dr. Boza and Osterhaus have already begun their preliminary research here on site. Gotcha. I'm passing it on. Let us know if there are any updates. Of course. Over and out. Huh, th there's more. Base, come in. Dr. Boza wants to talk with you. Test luck here. Over. We have a sort of discovery. Oh, I'm listening. 25th day. Base, this is Boza. Doctor, these tiny crystals contain highly advanced technology. Individually, they are slender and helpless. However, when in a group, they seem to stimulate and support each other, revealing new properties. At first, they started to emit an electromagnetic field. Okay. And then? A handful of small crystals gathered together. When in a larger group, they activated and... This is our biggest revelation so far. They started floating in the air. Did I hear that right? The larger the group, the easier, more freely. Yes. Apparently it's flying. Like a swarm of mechanical flies. Slow down, Doctor. You say crystals, or rather flies. Which one is it? Call it whatever you want. These creatures have a precise three-fold symmetry, resembling the letter Y, with three-pointed arms connecting in a central bulge. Black as coal in direct light, shimmering with shades of blue and olive in reflected light. As my colleague Osterhaus mentioned, they somewhat resemble the abdomens of certain terrestrial insects. Is Markovnik there? Navigator's unavailable right now. Well, please let him know we'll submit our reports as soon as he's available. Oh, and have him send us another transporter, will you? Autonomous robots the size of flies. It's not finished. Let's keep listening. Hello, convoy. Anka, come in. Are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. We're finishing loading. Preparing to depart. Don't! Mm, gets tense. Leave the material behind and return to the base. Huh. But why? What happened? Scouts came back from this whole city. Tesla? What's going on? Hello? Tesla, come in. Navigator speaking. Don't take anything. Just get out of there. Immediately. That's an order. Last saved recording. Amazing. My cripots grouping and flying together, similar to flies, capable of affecting other machines, even to the point that those affected become dangerous to humans. The microbots, they must be dangerous as well. I don't know how, but not all people were killed by larger robots. I think I figured it out, partially at least. The Alliance scientists were very clear that all of this had to do with an electromagnetic field, the field emitted by these flies. When people displayed disturbing symptoms, field measurements showed above average values. At first, I thought it was a sensoric malfunction. After all, the machines were broken. It turns out that field damaged them. So all the malfunctions... Yeah, my God, friendly again. So remember to have done the body inside and the um, serial number, or the serial code, on the last previous machine. Uh, so again, we will, in fact, we've got to interact with everything here in order to get Novik to let us go. So we will then interact with the damaged transporter. So that's how Merit. Most probably. Another known effect of the EM field is memory loss. The human organism continues to function normally, but the human being is such as helpless, vulnerable. Like a baby, they don't understand the world around them. Can such a person learn the world anew? It's 
unprecedented. All we can do now is believe that they will eventually snap out of it. And when they do, hope they won't be used as guinea pigs. We both know this is going to be difficult. Yes. And I don't even know if I'll survive this mission. Will I see them again? Will they develop properly? Even if it all works out, we will be strangers. They won't remember us. All that's left is hope. God damn it. Perhaps researching those flies will help us to better aid our people. We're theorizing for now. It'd be worth examining. Confirm, at least. Got it, Astrogator. I'll search for those containers of flies. And let's go and get a couple of more journal lists. So if we head to the left, there's another two right here. The TMU-85, that looks like to me. And the body just chilling in the sand. Looks like he's uh, touching himself right there. But that should be another two. And then what we can do, if we go around to the opposite side, we will be able to get inside. We should, of course, have the key already. So interact that and then interact with the switch in order to open it up. And, well, yeah. There's a couple of things we're going to do. First, we're going to get the next achievement. We try and open it up. Plus, there is another robot list that we're going to interact with here. So, light's going to pop on. The whole vehicle is just stuffed with bushes. But can you see past them? Not quite yet. And there we go. So, first of all, you're going to interact with the robot here at the back in order to get another bit of a journal updated entry. Then interact with the crushed containers, a couple of broken containers and everything. Again, you're going to have quite a bit of a conversation, but this should then unlock the Necro Evolution achievement. Everything that comes to my mind seems absurd. Well, look, I think it might work like this. The bushes and flies have a symbiotic relationship. I even consider that the flies are part of the bushes, just like the fruits. If the flies can fly, they behave more like insects and the bushes like plants. I see we're getting back to biological analogies. According to your profession, do I correctly conclude that you are confident that this can be a life form? Given the age of the oldest fawns and the evidence of continued activity, differentiation, a particular drive towards miniaturization, improvement, and lethal effectiveness, I dare say that we are dealing with an evolution here. Far longer than that of human. Also very different. And dead. Necroevolution. Mortuous evolution. I still don't understand. And there it is then. So that's the Necro Evolution achievement done. So the next one we're going to get is for obviously everything in the convoy. So continue heading downwards rather than back upwards. Now, there's a couple of things. Um, in fact, there's a, another list that we're going to do here. It's on top of this transporter, LMJ50, whatever that is. So make sure to get that list going. And then we can't interact with the force field, but we can interact with many things. Now, in order to get the story progression going, um, have a look at the force. Again, the force field emitters straight in front of you. That is actually part of a list again. That is a part of the convoy list. So make sure that you have at least interacted with that force field emitter straight in front of you. Uh, then you can have a look at the transport of the melted rocks. And what actually progresses the story is the tunnel to the bottom left corner. Field melted adjacent rocks. They had to run the generator on full power. They were defending themselves after all. From the swarm of flies, I presume. We don't know how large it was. They didn't capitulate. That's a good sign. Oh, well, I don't know that. So far, I can only confirm that the field has not dissipated. Yet. The second transporter is under a force field. It's hovering above the ground. So it is operational, probably also in better shape than the other one. Uh, it certainly looks better. The cargo may be intact then. 
Finally! So, once you have found your... Oh my gosh, three hours. Well, time flies when you're having fun with friends. Huh? So, uh, what we'll do, go back to the big transporter here. Then we'll take a... We're going to take a little right in just a minute. As soon as you stop gassing out the ass in. Assing out the gas. There we goes. Up we goes. So, again, if you hadn't have interacted with that tunnel just now, or the exit sign, this won't be available to get through, but since it is available to get through, let's get through! Astrogator, I found their probe. Looks like it hid from the flies. Or just ended up here by pure luck. Luck, indeed. Its registry could be valuable. Especially if it managed to photograph at a greater distance. Oh, come here, little probie. Right, so after we have followed the probe, we're going to follow him into this cave. And as you can see, just on the left here, is yet another person who has succumbed to the desert-like planet. So make sure that you have uh, interacted with said dead guy, person guy. And then we come out into the blustery, wintry zone. In fact, this is the last area of the wintry zone. Uh, just a couple more bodies to find, and we will get the convoy list achievement. Here's the first one then, TML89, um, on the big transporter truck. And then... If you uh, turn around directly from the truck and go effectively straight ahead of you, just over this mound, this sort of middle mound, right in front of us is going to be the next Baudi. Not a good way to go. There it is. Head just sticking out of the ground there. That's unfortunate. That should be number 20. And then what we're going to do, we're going to turn around. So you can see the Energo bot or the, the, you know, the big force field thing, whatever you want to call it. We will head down, open it up with our hands, as we've been doing all game. Oh, wrist looks a bit broken there. I don't know what's happened. Oh, it's kind of back to normal now. Anyway, uh, once we get inside... Uh, oh, right, he wants us to look for that. Yeah, it's there. Have a look at the helmet. And ba-bang, there we go. That should now be the convoy list all complete. You should now have 21 out of 21, and that should get you the Convoy Lost Achievement, so we don't have to worry about searching for any more of that anymore. So that is another one done. Right, interact with the shield power. Get that going all the way to the right as much as you can. That will obviously unshield the shield. Power down the shield, as it were. Uh, you can open up and have a look around, but there's really nothing to have a look around in, in all fairness. So, let's get on out of there. So, um, go head back to the transporter, then the one that is currently floating all on its own. And we're effectively just going to climb up and get in. I'm climbing onto the hovering transporter. <sighs> Before you leave them, please check that the cargo is intact. All right, so on the left, you are once again, we're going to interact with the key here at the top. Hey, 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 hey. She's having a bit of a... She's having a bit of a... Seizure at the moment there. Ay, 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 ay. And again, broken wrist syndrome's coming into effect. I mean, she has uh, fallen a lot in this game, in all fairness. Uh, go in, have a look at the supplies. The supplies are just the flies. Basically, they kind of look like just ninja death stars or something. Um, but after you have a look, after the conversation, you have a look at the flies. Go uh, turn around, go and try and start the engine, and then, um, yeah, cutscene's gonna happen with the ninja star's gonna come towards us. Maybe I shouldn't take the flies off Regis. Maybe it's better to leave them alone. Here, where they belong. What are you? I just worry that we might spread this threat. And the tragedy of one planet becomes a tragedy of entire galaxies. Not to mention all humanity. Forgive me, Doctor, but that sounds a bit overdramatic. We can handle some mechanical flies. 
Then you sound like a fool, sir. How can you be so sure? We were clueless just a moment ago. I've only just begun to understand what's going on, but you already know how to handle it. Yes, now I promise you we'll analyze everything thoroughly. Now we need to focus on getting you out of there. Can we at least agree on that? Yes. First, though, I'd like to check the cargo. Very well. Just hurry up. I must admit, they look amazing. Yes, sir. What have you done? I I'm watching them. Nothing more. Don't worry, sir. What? Some goddamn black holes have been distracted for. Can you say not to worry? Just look outside, Doctor. See for yourself. So finally, we are at the last memory. Again, this one is unmissable. So now you should get the I Remember Everything achievement for getting all the memories from past events. Lovely little diamond shining right there. So that should be another one complete. Now she's all like, ah, oh, jeez, I'm still alive. What the hell? I don't know if I should interrupt your uh, speech, sir. It is quite interesting to listen to. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's just too much. Mm. I'll ask you how many times already. <laughs> it's not like I'm looking for problems where there aren't any. The task is extremely difficult. Yes, it is. At least we learnt the truth about this planet and the inorganic beings that inhabit it. What good does that do us, though? We know the cause of the stupor. Maybe we can find a way to cure our people. If anyone from the Alliance survived, and they already started their research into a cure... I wouldn't count on it. It's more likely they're all dead. Not necessarily. It's a large base, and I only found a few bodies. The rest of them must be somewhere. Or you'll find more corpses, Yasna. Hey! 
Something changed. The balloon over the base disappeared. You mean it flew away, or did it fall to the ground? Oh, I hope it's a latter. If it caught the west wind, it would have fallen in this area. We're lucky. It's hanging from a cliff, close to the ground. Can you get to it? And hook it? Maybe that won't be necessary. Oh, shit. Somebody's here. If all you're seeing is dots on the tracker... No. I can see them with my own eyes. Two of them, even. Two people, alive. Huh? Where did they go? Have you lost them? Well, I can't see them now. They were here just a second ago. Are you sure? What did they look like? One was wearing an Alliance suit, a green one. The other one, I don't know. He looked different. I see. And now they're nowhere to be found. Damn right. Doctor. Oh, just a moment ago, my consciousness was over the ocean. I saw a big black cloud that appeared out of nowhere. So now we are starting to get into the even juicier stuff of the juiciness of the story. So we head left when we get up. Of course, there's only a couple of things, four, four or five things there that we had to look for. Uh, so now we'll start heading down, 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 down. Bam, 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 bam. Woo! If it had operational cameras, we might get some answers. You don't have to convince me, Astrogator. I'm going. The road is Good to know. Thank you. How are you feeling? Let me just say this. Literally everything hurts. I don't know where frustration ends and a contused lung begins. But at least... Yes. I'm alive. You know what, sir? It was these flies from the very beginning. What do you mean? My accident, for example. It's true, I, I hurt myself badly back then. Damage the radio. So, open wide for some saga! Right, there was a bit of an edit right there, sorry, but all you're doing is effectively just driving straight forward to the left and down, and then you're following these big old tracks around until you find the balloon. Uh, so I do apologize, that was a bit of a weird edit. Uh, not sure why, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, they're pretty big tracks, you'd be hard-pressed to miss these ones, so it's effectively, as I said, go straight a little bit, then left and down, and then uh, follow these tracks until we get to the balloon. Why nobody put some turbo on these things, I'll never know, but this is basically, this uh, Regis 3 is going to be the next Fast and Furious film. they already done it in space, now they're going to do it even more in space. Regis 3, turbos on rovers. Vin Diesel gets brainwashed, but then he comes around again. Family. And stuff. We are drop bro, family. Anyway, uh, enough about Groot. Open up the ting. And we're going to get some pictures to look at again. Please stop. From the top. Let's see. The 25th day of the mission. Morning. The balloon goes up. You can see the immediate surroundings of the base. Huh. I didn't see that from below. They parked several vehicles on top of a nearby hill. It found some water reservoirs. Many of them. Huh. The balloon is moving away from the base. Which direction? Approximately south. 
Rocks, water, sand. Anything noteworthy? No, not really. No people, units, nor significant changes in the surroundings. The balloon's completing its loop. It seems quieter at the base. But there's still a few people. And they're grouping up. A dozen people gathered in the square, next to the vehicles. Two vehicles that weren't there before. And they've left. There are no vehicles. There's no one. They must have set off towards their old base. Or to the ship. The subsequent shots are similar to each other. They show an empty base. There are actually quite a few of these. Oh. Captured the moment I entered the base. And it's empty again. At two o'clock in the afternoon. I was on my way to the convoy by then. So we won't find out anything else. Wait, you're wrong. Someone was in the base. A man. So he's real after all. Yes, I I'm not crazy. I saw him. I never suggested you were. But nevertheless, I apologize. Shouldn't have doubted your words, Jasna. But where is this man now? And can we expect any more? I think he's near the base. Judging by the last slide. The Alliance must have a hideout there. And we need to go back, I guess. And now it'd be time to go to the Alliance hideout. So, get back into your turbo-infused Fast and Furious, I don't know, what film are we on now? 27? 38? I don't know, something like that. But get inside your rover. Now it is time to head to the Alliance base to finish the job. Get 5,000 space bucks for a job well done. So, you're effectively going straight. This always happens in the game, that little freeze right there, anyway. So, yep, you're going straight, going right. Why do you insist on seeking them out? I feel like I have to do it. Oh, the probe again. It's right near the base, within range of the control center. Uh, affirmative. So from here, we're going to go to the left. You see the Ergobot, the force field shield uh, thing. So go to the left there and continue onwards. Agreed. I'm curious to see what it's recorded, especially since it witnessed what happened to the convoy. And it's a bit of a bumpy ride, whoa. Uh, but we're just taking a right here, uh, where we can see uh, a couple more tings. In fact, this is where we're going to get uh, operate and land another different probe to get the flying objects operator achievement going. So we are just going to head into the middle of all this little area, head into the one which says LMU 52, take a left, and effectively just going straight down. Oof, she got a sprint on her this time. Take a left here. And again, what you're going to do then is go to number three, I believe number three, um, and land the second operator drone. Remember, you should uh, look for the landing site marker and it'll tell you where to go. Right. Let's meet this probe. I'll bring it to the ground. Got it down. So that should be your second one, so your achievement should unlock by now. If not, for some reason, there is a third one, which you can get a little bit later on. I don't stop for that one personally, but I'll point it out when we get there. Um, so, obviously, we're going to head back outside. Obviously. Yeah, let's go this way. Yes, great. 
And now, of course, we need to find the second one. It's not this one. It's going to be the one to the left of the robot. There it is. So just go ahead, interact with all the pictures, and be prepared to be shocked again. <gasps> I'm so shocked at everything going round for me. If it were up to me, I would be on that lander all the way back home. But, uh, well, I'm not me, so... I'm me? Wow. The cloud in all its glory. Both fascinating and terrifying at the same time. People don't stand a chance. The cloud caught up to them and killed... No, not that. It didn't kill anyone, but neutralized them all. Which is even worse than death. That probe managed to evacuate. Waited still until I approached it. We know what happened after. To be fair, mind, the Revelation A is actually a bit of a shocker. So those flying ninja stars, um, well, they kind of... They're evil! The corrupting stuff. Corrupting stuff. So, uh, have a look at the... Uh, just behind the rover. What I'm looking for is the actual hideout. There it is. So it should just be behind the rover. Um, so that is the hideout that we're going for. So that is now what we are going to be going for. And for the next... I mean, for the next... For a while, there's going to be a lot of talking. Um, and there's going to be another case where we'll have to pause... Get, get one achievement, pause, reload the checkpoint, and uh, go for the other option. But for now, we're just going to do a little, a little bit of a lot of climbing up. without safety equipment this is nowhere to be seen no alternative route yes no. I'm, I'm all right I'm almost there perhaps it's the last moment to go back and do what? As far as I remember, we ran out of options here. It's just, if I were you... With all due respect, Astrogator, it is me being stuck on this surface. So if you let me, I'll take my chances. And I will... I will find the man. Have you? made the climb worth it already. So you're on top? Yes. Activity within radius? I heard no beeps. And I see no dots. Wow! We're in trouble! How? What? I found him. Very well. Now keep your distance and be careful. It's too late. What? I can't hear you. It's too late to keep... Yes, now what is it? Why is it too late? Jasper, speak to me. He's looking for others. He's... <laughs> you. What have you done? Now then, for this part, there's a lot of talking, a lot of dialogue options to choose. Nothing, uh, especially for the achievement, nothing matters too much just yet. It's when we get into his little secret hideout base and he starts asking us, So what are you doing here? Are you finally ready to admit something? Uh, which is... Uh, Quite a few minutes away. There's going to be some slow walking and some slow talking. Um, but he's basically... Uh, Novik's basically going to ask us... 
Instead of talking, we'll have to give it some mm-hmm and mm-mm. Um, so yeah, just follow along. But if you uh, pick a different dialogue option than I do at the moment, don't panic your sweet little um, butt off about it. He's going to lead you to his superiors, which is good in theory. Wait. Don't move. You didn't even spare the Arctan. Got some nerve to unleash such murderous shit. Hey, don't turn around. You're a scientist, just like me. Yes, now what are you doing? You don't shoot at people. Shoot? He has a gun. I'm a technician, smartass. Firearms or chemical weapons. What's the difference? Same outcome. Look, I know that people have died. Your comrades. But you have to understand. Huh. I see you're no longer pretending. Listen, you'll stand before the Astrogator or the entire council. That's right. Obviously. It's really not necessary. But if you try anything, I'll do it. I'll shoot you. Yes, sir. I don't know what you're trying to do, but he sounds serious. There has to be a way. I don't know what will happen to me. Huh? What did you say? Quiet, yes, sir. Don't take any chances with him. He's the talking to me. I'll ask the questions, you just answer with a short yes or no. Is there anyone else? Apart from him. Uh huh. So he's not alone. Our others don't spy. <sighs> Start, damn it. Uh huh. Why can't I hear any other people? Nuh uh. Hang on. There's no one else after all. Or maybe just. not people. When it rains, it pours, huh? Uh huh. That's surprising. Do you have some alien there? <laughs> of course not. Nuh uh. Got it, of course not. That's why I'm betting on a humanoid robot. Uh-huh. The Electrobots have already been phased out. So it must be one of the Arctans. The model with a small head pressed into the body. One of those so-called porters. Theoretically harmless. But due to its tremendous strength and potential reprogramming, you best be careful around it. Come on. Uh, do you want to tell me something about this man? Something about his appearance, maybe? Uh-huh. Does it concern his outfit? Uh-huh. Which part? Oh, you just had... Legs? Torso? Uh-huh. It's about his torso? Mm -mm. Must have misheard. Let's try again. Does it concern... Legs? Torso? Work already. Head? It's about his head? <laughs> what could be so unusual? Uh, I don't suppose you can see much since he has his helmet on? No. -uh. Really? No helmet? Uh-huh. That's why I can hear him so clearly. It's... if he's been without it for a long time, with these levels of oxygen and methane, he must be a lunatic. It works. Let's go. Break time's over. I can hear something's happening. Keep it up. Straight ahead. Oh, where is he taking you? Do you think you could ask? Where are you taking me? You came here yourself. So what are you expecting, huh? Don't risk it. Let it go. You set up a field base down there. So I didn't expect you to have a second one here. Yes, really? Oh, really? I'm listening. I have no idea what this place is, nor why or, or where you're leading me. Doctor, bite your tongue for once. Somehow, I don't expect I'll meet your astrogator here. You're right. Yes, sir, I'm losing you. The signal is getting weaker. Wherever he's leaving you, we won't be able to communicate. Uh-huh. Get in. Go. Yes, sir. Stay calm. I, I, I don't want to. Go. Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh. I'll do everything in my...
Sit here. And don't you dare move. I have something for you. Okay, it's not that cushy, but it'll do. Uh, so we're going to get the survivor's achievement for meeting a couple of survivors there from the Alliance. One is normal, and two are dog-like, uh, which is unfortunate, but yes. So again, this is just another long scene which we can't skip and we can't get through any dialogue quicker, so... Well, I guess just enjoy it for the first time and then dislike it a little bit more the second time. And then really just roll your eyes at it with the third time. With the second playthrough, I meant. Hmm. Weren't exactly the funny types. Although, Spliskus the speleologist sounds pretty damn hilarious. Come on, you must be hungry. One for you. And one... For Spliskus. I'll pass for now. Wouldn't be able to swallow anything anyway. Spluskas, my friend. It's just me. Take it easy. You're safe. But you have to eat something. To have strength. Oh, gee. Don't do that. It's tasty. Eat. Come on. Eat. Did you like it? Very nice. A few more. Unfortunately, I don't have any good news. I've searched the caves. I know Dr. Magdov went down there. If only you could tell me which cave she worked in. Maybe it would be easier then. If only you could. Zebulon has also gone missing without a trace. I don't even know where to look. And the whole convoy crew. I'll go there tomorrow. Maybe by then, with reinforcements. And it went smoothly. You objected so much. Comrade, leave her alone. Let her sit there. I need to send a message. And you, mind your own business. Hello, Bridge. Rohitra speaking. <sighs> Rohitra. Can you hear me? Over. You're still not getting through. This is an urgent announcement. It's the 26th day of the mission, 1300 hours, 42 minutes. I am reporting the presence of Commonwealth units on the surface of the planet. I have arrested one person, it's a woman, unarmed. I haven't noticed any other people or other units nearby, but this person was in active radio contact. I'm requesting backup, over and out. Hey, Milos. Hope you're still in range. Listen, the Commonwealthers are here. I have one of them, uh, a woman. She was talking to someone on the radio, but I didn't see anyone around. I see what you're doing. So, yeah, for the next part then, again, yes, this 
this particular bit does take quite the while. It doesn't matter what you do to the, the dog guy, not Spruce Gus, uh, Lendor. Uh, you can tell him your name. Uh, I'm just effectively being nice at this point. And then we will, in just a little bit, be able to interact with some stuff to get him talking. And then the whole achievement thing begin. Don't talk to me. Uh, I just wanted to ask. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, so what now? Uh, talk to the wall? I'm not prohibiting you from doing that. By the way, the name Spluskas is hilariously awesome. Um, so we've got a couple here to interact with. The shielding, the facial hair, and the um, ventilation. And then we'll finally be able to turn around. Temporary solution. You've been camping here long? Are you shielding yourself from the flies? Uh, from what? Flies. Y you named them that yourself. I mean, the Alliance did. Seems to me that the commanding staff will have a lot to talk to you about. Fortunately, I don't have to. Uh, the can makes absolutely no difference, uh, but it is the USCA Condor which we are going to interact with. And then the achievement shall begin. So with the two achievements, uh, one is for basically keeping uh, an open mind and attitude. Um, and the... Next one is for choosing not to cooperate with Rohitra. Um, so, obviously, as I said, uh, when we get the one achievement, we're going to go for being kind first. And then we're going to reload the, the checkpoint. You will have to do all of that part again um, from, the, from when you get sat down for the first time. So it's another, like, five, six, seven minutes or so. But, you know, better than replaying the whole game, even though we've got to anyway. The Invincible was supposed to be here soon. Not Condor. Not now. Where did you get this information from? From intelligence. There you go. Right, so here it begins then. This is where the Beyond Divisions achievement begins. So first of all, we are basically going to say that we were supposed to find out why you're here. So, effectively, what we're trying to say is we were sent to spy on him. Um, just so he's, yeah. You could say so. We were supposed to seize this opportunity to surpass your research. <laughs> then they led you on a wild goose chase. We didn't even have any research plan. We landed due to a malfunction in the main core. The work dragged on for so long the scientists were given permission to study the planet. But they couldn't sit still in one damn place. That's all. <sighs> Fuck. Nothing adds up. But I know what's wrong with your comrades. The same thing happened to our people. How many of you were there? Six people. Only two of which are still unharmed. Including you? Me and our astrogator. Is he around here too? I'm the only one left on the surface. So... Not many. I told you, we're a simple unit. So now just interact with everyone on the picture and she's gonna be all like... Gorski, Maris Potatoes, Carrot Crowder and Clovel. Grovel for me, Carvel. A geologist. Her mind's as sharp as a razor. She's tough on stupidity like no other. She's... She was... A dear friend of mine. He miraculously survived. I gave him my oxygen. Then the lander picked him up. Now I don't even know what state he's in. That doesn't sound like a miracle to me. Huh? What? You saved him, not some dumb luck. Crowter, a chemist. Second in rank to Astrogator. Kovel, our physicist. He's unresponsive now. Always had a gentle nature to him, and a rather peculiar sense of humor. What happened to his mind is tragic. Knowledge was everything to him. So, he lost... Everything? Yes. Show them to me. There were more of us. Much more. We lost left for Condor with the survivors. Those who were unable to... to do anything, really. I stayed to see if anyone else survived. And so we wait. What a shame. So, interact with the cigarette butts on the floor. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, anything with the word butt in it is, uh... Yes, I'm a 33-year-old child. Man-child is, is what it were. Uh, throw him the old cigarines. And again, we do have to say a couple more uh, sp sp specific options in order to get the Beyond Divisions achievement. If 
fine. Let me tell you something. Something you won't like. Oh? I'm listening. My blaster doesn't work. I destroyed its power supply myself. <laughs> what? I don't want to kill anyone. Ever again. I'd rather not remember it, you know? So, you've killed before? This one time. One too many. When was the last time you had something to drink? The last time? I don't even remember. Thought so. It's water. <laughs> Local. So when he offers us the drink here, we are going to take the water. So uh, top option, thank you, that's what I need. And this should effectively uh, end uh, any other sort of dialogue options and things that are coming through. So once the achievement, as soon as the achievement unlocks, what we need to do is immediately pause the game and reload the last checkpoint. Because I, I think that when we get to the new cutscene where Rohitra is taking a little nap and the robot's looking after us, that is the new checkpoint. So if you want to get both of the achievements out of the way now, um, as soon as the achievement unlocks, which will be um, just as the scene is about to end, I'll tell you when it is, um, then you will, as I said, load up and go for the other way. Should I throw it? No, that's enough throwing. We'll do as follows. I'll give that Astro Gator of yours a message, letting him know you're alive. Then I'll read your journal. And in the meantime, you will get some rest. Been through a lot. So it's going to be coming up now, just as the screen fades to black, the achievement will unlock. So that's why I'm just trying to, uh, that's why I'm <laughs> pausing so much there. But as soon as it unlocks, like I said, if you, again, we have to, play through these uh we have to do a second playthrough anyway in order to get to this part uh, we have to get through this part anyway um so if you just want to wait and get the on our own achievement then it's basically you're doing the opposite options where you're saying that we're not spying on them or if you'd rather get it done now of course then just uh, keep following the video and get it done again sadly we do have to replay another five minutes of dialogue which we can't skip which is always nice we love unskippable dialogue and cutscenes, right, guys? That's even more than we need. It's for your safety. Oh, I'm glad to see you guys, too. What about our friend? Still cranky? Uh, I've always thought the speleologists weren't exactly the funny types. Although, Spliskus the speleologist sounds pretty damn hilarious. Come on, you must be hungry. One for you. And one... For Spliskus. I'll pass for now be able to swallow anything anyway. Spluskas, my friend. It's just me. Take it easy. You're safe. But you have to eat something to have strength. Oh, gee. Don't do that. It's tasty. Eat. Come on. Eat. Like it? Very nice. A few more. Unfortunately, I don't have any good news. I've searched the caves. I know Dr. Magdov went down there. If only you could tell me which cave she worked in. Maybe it would be easier then. If only you could. Zebulon has also gone missing without a trace. I don't even know where to look. Whole convoy crew. I'll go there tomorrow. Maybe by then, with reinforcements. And it went smoothly. And he objected so much.
happened to you? <sighs> Lendor, comrade. Don't be fooled. She's not our friend. She's responsible for all this. And I need to report it to headquarters. I'll strap you back for now. I'm sorry for that. And you, mind your own business. Hello, Bridge. Rohitra speaking. <sighs> Rohitra. Can you hear me? Over. You're still not getting through. This is an urgent announcement. It's the 26th day of the mission, 1300 hours, 42 minutes. I am reporting the presence of Commonwealth units on the surface of the planet. I have arrested one person. It's a woman, unarmed. I haven't noticed any other people or other units nearby, but this person was in active radio contact. I'm requesting backup, over and out. Hey, Milos. Hope you're still in range. Listen, the Commonwealthers are here. I have one of them, uh, a woman. She was talking to someone on the radio, but I didn't see anyone around. I see what you're doing. <clears throat> I just want her to sit more comfortably. Yeah, sure. Better get comfortable with discomfort. We'll sit around for a while. My name's Yasna. I'm asking. You're Rahitra, right? <clears throat> I work as an astrobiologist. Brother is a spy. Don't eavesdrop on me, Yasna. Don't talk to me. I, I just wanted to ask. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, so what now? Uh, talk to the wall. <laughs> I'm not prohibiting you from doing that. Yet. Do you have air filters here? <sighs> Did you know there's methane in the atmosphere? I know. These tanks are a temporary solution. You've been camping here long? Are you shielding yourself from the flies? Uh, from what? Flies. You, you named them that yourself. I mean, the Alliance did. Mm, seems to me that the commanding staff will have a lot to talk to you about. Fortunately, I don't have to. Wait, Condor? Condor what? You. Are you from Condor's crew? Yeah, so? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Here we can agree. You're talking complete nonsense. What do you mean? How come that's such a revelation? The Invincible... Right, so welcome back to the next part then. So are we really, really finally ready to admit blah, blah, blah? Bro, Hitra, bro. Shut your hips up, boy. Right, so this time we're going to say we were exploring this planet, nothing more. So we make sure to choose the top option. A small research unit. We're looking for planets with rich flora and fauna. That's the only reason we landed here. <laughs> no way. This planet is a complete corpse. According to estimations, it should be teeming with life. With its atmospheric composition and insulation, it should be a veritable paradise. We couldn't have predicted that... Fine, fine. If you don't want to tell me the whole truth, then don't. But do not lie. Intelligence is not interested in flowers and bees. Next up, again, grab the cigarette butts and then throw him the old siggy sig sigs that you have. Next option, choose I wasn't lying. 
So, X button there, I wasn't lying. I'm sorry, but I wasn't lying. We're just scientists who've had awful luck. Uh-huh. Our intelligence, your intelligence. Our orders, your orders. It's all gone to hell, Rahitra. Now we need to focus on the people. I know what's wrong with them. Should I expect them here? Your people? I'm the only one left on the surface. The astrogator stays in the orbiting dragonfly. And there's no contact with the rest. If you lie, you only harm them. Several dozen of our men set off with me lost to Condor. If they find more Commonwealth spies... And then again, choose the second option. I'm not lying! I'm telling you this for the last time. I didn't lie. All right, all right. Let's change the subject. When was the last time you had something to drink? The last time? I don't even remember. Thought so. It's water. <laughs> this time when he offers us the water, we are going to not drink it. So again, it'll be the second option, number X. No spanky hairy crutch. I see. So all in all, we don't trust each other, do we? Do you really know what's wrong with them? I know what caused it, and how. This planet is inhabited by microbots that your scientists have called flies. Millions of microbots. A real cloud. What? A cloud of flies, which can literally erase the human mind, wash away all memories. That sounds... Can you prove it somehow? I could, if you released me. Nice try. What we'll do as follows. Arc-10 will watch over you, and I'll keep an eye out for Milos. As soon as he returns with help, you will show us this cloud. Arc-10, come to me. Supervisory procedure. One person, a woman. No Alliance ID. Targeted. I confirm. Should I start the surveillance? Yes. Guard our guest. Oh, great. <sighs> Now, the achievement's not going to unlock just here, just yet. Um, I mean, dude could have at least let us lean up against something, but there we go. Um, so, we can't actually just get up because the arc tan wheel just pushes us back down. Um, but we're going to have to try in order to get the rock action to pick up. There we go. No. So, pick up the rock, turn around to Spluskas. And throw it directly at Spluskas's hair. This is Spluskas. Spluskas's Spluskas. And off goes the Arctan, and he actually won't bother you. So you can run about, you can go. Nah, 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 nah. Or you can say, like, Robot Sack, Robot Bells, or something. And uh, no, he's not even going to bother you. So uh, have a look at his blaster. We can see that it is broken and interact there with the label on the left. And uh, that's about it. So now all we gotta do is follow the wire out of here and the on her own achievement will unlock. And we have finally got past a very big talking talk. Phew. It worked. Astrogator, I, I escaped. Doctor, what a relief. Where exactly are you? I'm near their hideout. Though I intend to change that as soon as possible. There? Have you met Spluskus and Lendl? Yet. How do you know their names? I've intercepted the Alliance's community. Keep going. We'll discuss everything on the way. The path along the cliff looks much safer. I think I can get down here. Good. Proceed. Yasna, I have to ask. What happened in the last few hours? That man... He didn't hurt you, did he? I talked to Rahitra for quite some time. Then he had an Arctan guard me, but its algorithms proved easy to trick. What do you make of this man? What kind of person is he? He wasn't very pleasant to deal with, but that's understandable given the circumstances. 
He's lost. Angry. Scared. It's a shame I failed to win him over. Then we need a new plan. Ah, uh, yeah. Seems so. Although I could use some rest. Uh, it was a rough day. A night. Rough couple of days, actually. Sorry, Doctor, but you'll have to get away from there first. I think I know where to go. There's a hole from an antimatter beam on the other side of the canyon. Very well. Perhaps you can find out where the Invincible landed. Oh, I didn't tell you the most important thing. Condor's here. On this planet. Condor? Yes. Looks like HQ got it all mixed up. Both the arrival time and the ship itself. What? That's unbelievable. How could the intelligence be so wrong? As soon as we return, I'll break their... No. Never mind. If we don't have a better plan. I want to go there. To Condor? Yes. Their scientists had the equipment and time that we don't have. They could have discovered something important. Unless they flew away. All right. We'll do as you say, Doctor. Trust your judgment. <sighs> So after that nice big conversation, and it was a linear path up till this point, um, but from here we are effectively going to just more or less turn around, we can find the rover, and we can go to the other side of the canyon, where your mother lays on the ground. <laughs> I'm so good at lyrics. Not. Okay, so... All we're doing then is, uh, well, we're just following the road ahead uh, to get to the next cave hall. So this bit isn't actually too bad. It's not as confusing as the other parts, in all fairness. Just keep following the wandering eye. I'm wondering, what is Condor doing here? I have no idea. Rahitra didn't tell me anything about it. Okay, so out of the tunnel into the light, we're going to then take a big old right. And when I say right, I mean left. So, uh, yeah, that's awkward. For some reason, I thought that was a hill. As it turns out, it's a big boulder that we can't get over. So when I meant right, I actually meant left. Sorry. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So you're going left and down a hill. That's, yep, that's where we're going. Now, when we get to this next fork in the road, this time we're actually taking the right-hand side. Um, 
Again, a lot of this looks the same. A lot of it can be confusing. But, uh, yeah. So, we are now going to drive straight. And then what we're going to see is a whole bunch of Arsenal at Rohitra's Ting. Rohitra does have a lot. Now, this is actually where we can get the third flying probe achievement. So, if you didn't get the achievement for the... Um, uh, flying it and landing two different probes in one of these trailers here is the third attempt that you can get out again I don't stop I don't bother stopping here uh, we might as well just carry on uh, but again if you need it, it it was in the trailer that we just passed um, so for now uh, th no point going straight ahead because that's a cliff and if you want to get smashed to bits off the cliff I mean, them be my guest, but we ain't getting no achievements that way as they decide to try and run off the cliff again. Stupid rogue. God damn it. All right, here we go. We're back. Um, so we are effectively then just going to the right from where we are. And if you were coming down from the trailer bit, we're uh, heading left. So anyway, up the hill we go. So when we get to the top, we're going to take a right here. Follow the Alliance Transport. How can I? I don't know where it is. Uh, so continuing sort of right. So you're just sticking with the right hand side. And then continuing onwards. Uh, there's a problem. I'm listening. The route they took is blocked by a force field. There must be an Energo bot somewhere. But I don't know if I can get to it. Maybe you can go around. Ah, uh, god damn it. Now we have to get out and walk. Although, apparently, walking seems to be faster than actually driving. Uh, so you've got to interact there with the boulders and everything just in front of us. A little bit of conversation again, of course, will be happening. I still can't proceed. Even if I find a way, I'll have. Oh, wait. A transporter. They're here. Is standing still in front of the force field. Is that Milos convoy? I'll confirm. There's someone inside. More than one. Two. And they're all in the transporter? Ready yourself for the worst, Doctor. I am ready. I'm going in. Well, actually, I'm squeezing in. So once you've squeezed inside this trailer, constructing trailer, whatever it is, have a look at the console command. Oh, the console command, sorry, just the console center. Interact with the lights, that's going to turn the lights on. And then what you will need to do is, if you turn around and head towards the back door, if you look at the right-hand side door, you'll be able to interact with it. And then you can press the button in order to go through the back, but you're going to have to get through quite the few bodies, which... I can only imagine the stink is worse than a newborn baby's nappy slash diaper. It's a, vehicle. it's a coffin, sir. Mass grave. They were all crammed in here. In the heat and darkness, with no chance of understanding what's going on. A terrible death. I'm sorry you have to see that. The number of registers, 428. Playing in broadcast mode. Did you turn on the recordings? No. It started automatically. Hello, Gondor. This is your interest speaking. It's day 26, time 805. I'm continuing my search for the missing crew. I've checked the excavation area. I've yet... Come follow me, one and two and six and seven and forty-three and nobody gets out of this shark pit alive. Um, sorry, a little bit of skin tread right there. Right, so once we're out of that, we are now going to set up a follow-up plan. So now we can just head back to the rover, wait until um, Novik finishes, and then we can finally get in. Come on, I'm cold. I assume it would be cold. 
It's not the same recording. Over and he out. says the same thing over and over again. Hello. The same dates, Condor. times. This is Rohit. But they're different recordings. It's day 26, time oh, shoot. 806. I've returned from the excavation site. I was looking so for others. So he loses by... his memory like me. They were no longer there. But that memory I'll never returns search. him. We were waiting. All these recordings have the same content. He's been Come here back, for far too you? long. Over and out. Far too long not Hello, to receive help from Condor. Condor. This is Rohitra speaking. Right, Doctor. It's day Nobody 26, will come. time 806. I've returned from planet. the excavation Except site. The in the cave. I was looking for others. I have a request. They were no longer there. Let's skip this to the rest of the recordings. We Can you stop them? For your no way. I'm not going back there. Come back, will you? Over and out. Well, let's change the channel. Hello, channel. Condor. Not sure. This That's is Rohitra speaking. All right. I'll talk to you in a second. Time is... Ah. Much better. Agreed. Yes, boys. I'm getting through it now. Four hours and seven minutes in. What a what a delight. What a delightful time we've had. Um so yeah, just continue on straight. Now we're gonna be coming up to the point where we're going to find Rohitra's arsenal. The bunch of deadly weapons that could kill us in an instant if it really wanted to. I'll be there in a minute. Please slow down. Remember, he has a gun. He didn't shoot at you the first time, but if you go in now... He won't this time as well. In any case, let's not worry in advance. I haven't located him yet. What about all those machines on the hill? Is there anything there he could use to threaten you? No reaction to your late-night visit? Well, let's see. Given you're bringing him such devastating news, you might overreact. He could literally erase me from this planet if he wanted to. I know what's at stake. I can handle it. All right. So Rahitra should always be in the same place. He's basically inside the, uh, what looks like an antimat, actually, uh, directly in front of us, if we can ever get over this mound, if I had any. So again, some more conversations going to happen, and then we're going to have to help Rohitra with some ninja stars. So again, dialogue choices do not matter. Here we go again. What are you doing here? Uh, take it easy, Rahitra. What? How do you... Uh, I'll tell you everything. Just shut up for a moment and listen. I will not. Rahitra, for fuck's sake. Do it for Spluskas and Lendor. We're not beating around the bush, Doctor. You think it's a 26th day of the mission. Just after the attack on your base that left many of you in critical condition. But the truth is much worse. Milos left a long time ago. What? H how do you... You fell victim to that attack as well. The microbot cloud has wiped all traces of your comrades' memories. Your long-term memory is probably fine. That is, up until the moment you found them. You keep forgetting everything that comes after. I have reason to believe it happens during sleep. As a result, you relive the same day over and over, waiting for backup that will never arrive. The micro what? Cloud? That's bullshit! I don't know what you're trying to achieve, but- Focus, Rahitra. We've already met once. We spoke in your hideout. You've had me at gunpoint already. Don't mess with my head. Milos will come. Milos is dead. They're all dead. They've been lying nearby for hundreds of days. You were supposed to go and check why contact was lost. You were supposed to leave tomorrow. But tomorrow never comes. Stop it! 
I know that it's hard for you to believe. I I'm not against you. I came back to help you. No, I'm warning you. I'll use my gun. Rahitra, I know you won't shoot me. How long have I been here? Good. You're finally getting to him. 428 days. At least, that's how many times you've broadcast your morning message to Milos. This... this... this cloud? A result of the evolution of inorganic beings. It, it attacks the most important parts of biological organisms. Our brains. It responds to radio waves. That's how it found our crew. Damn it. Every time I broadcast, there's a wave bombarding the devices. This electromagnetic field. The cloud produced it. Doctor. That's right. This is how it damages our brains. Our robots and, and all machinery. Hey, to interrupt, but we have a problem. The cloud is coming. Right now? Yes. It's closing in on you. Counting us. Copy that. Huh? What's going on? Who are you talking to? This is a topic for another time. The cloud will be here soon. Quick, lead to the hideout. Now, move! Can it get through the force field? Hey, hey! What are you trying to do? I'm done waiting. There's no need to anymore. There's no one left to look for. All that's left is revenge. Astrogator, I think he wants to fight. What for? Can't you stop him somehow? He'll cause trouble for both of you. I don't think so. He's already opened the field. I see. You can't beat him, join him. You have a much better chance of surviving if you stick together. Hey! Uh, you! What's your name, anyway? Yasna. I'm... Ah, uh, whatever. You know already. What's this? You familiar with the energy transformation of Dirac emitters? Uh... <sighs> Thought so. The emitter's energy system is... Here, take it. You can help. By shooting. I'll take care of maintaining the force field. When you aim, wait for the green light. Then you can take the shot. The device is connected to three combat machines. Okay. It sounds simple. Hey, over. Let's stay in touch. Copy that. Okay, so we're going to get an achievement here as well. I don't think this is actually missable. It's for basically eliminating more than 50,000 microbots. Um, there's basically three long rounds of trying to fight these things. Um, of course, we're protected by the force field for now. So you should get the achievement. If you don't get it in the first round before we pass out for five seconds... You will get it in the second round. So yeah, as he said, then just wait until all the uh, all three lights are green, and then uh, just press the right bumper to aim, uh, right trigger to shoot. I think it's right trigger. It says in the bottom left hand corner anyway. Um, but you can literally just aim it anyway because there's a lot more than fifty thousand up in here. So just wait until they all go green, aim, shoot, and then just keep doing this for the next couple of minutes. Later.
give up now. You wanted this fight, so fight! And there we go then. So, obviously, I got the Fierce Fight achievement, so you should have it by now. Uh, if not, like I said, we should have another round of passing out and then going again. But just before they doom us all. So, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing and you will do what you do. Right then, so, um, baby hips don't lie, Rohiptra, he's actually straight in front of us, he was, where we, where I just was, he's right in front of us in a saucer. So I decided to go all around and completely, um, almost miss him. Uh, but yes, he is in a saucer, so again, it's literally just a case of getting up on the saucer, having a bit of conversation, and getting your buns out of there, and then... We will be coming up to the final area. Not only the final area, we're going to be getting a whole bunch of endings, which will pretty much roughly take an hour because of lots of talking. Rrr. Uh, wait! Haven't you had enough? It might be time to hide and consider other options. You must be kidding. I'm not going to sit on my ass in the dark. Now I finally know what happened. I see you're not going to listen to me either. Because there's nothing to talk about. Look, I'm giving you a simple choice, Yasna. Are you going or not? Go where there could be water, medicine, resources, or stay here to die. Wow, such a hard choice. I hope I won't regret it. Too bad you didn't mention earlier that you had a working saucer. We could fly to Condor right away. Or even into orbit. Working is a big word. It's just a tin can with a couple of sputtering engines. Controlling it technically doesn't work. <sighs> Somehow it does not surprise me. Let's fly. Just a minute. I'm waiting for the force field to shut down, which should be soon. How do you know all this? Well, I heard him talking to them. To you. Uh, didn't he notice I wasn't responding? Yes, he did. 
He said he'd be back. If he expected me to wait here, he's sorely mistaken. Okay, literally don't know why we could have just taken the sorcerer out of there in the first place, but... You know, again, I'm not a, some kind of space guy. So, this is the final area. The Condor. So glad they didn't call it the Condom. Because that would have been the Condom. Because that would have been, uh, yeah. Too many jokes in there first. So, uh, again, for now, it's literally, as I said, a case of just climbing up the bridge. Uh, getting to the actual bridge itself is, is relatively easy enough. And then again, as I said, it is just about getting all the endings. Or <laughs> about 95% of the endings. Rich will waste no time. Is it attacking already? For now, he's only released the Cyclops, as they call it. The hell is he think? <laughs> it's floating majestically, three meters above the ground. Huh? What does it look like? Must admit that I haven't seen any pictures of the Cyclops. There's one more thing, Yasta. This is important. I'll be able to confirm it in a while, but so far everything indicates... What is that, Astrogator? Headquarters were right about the Invincible. It's actually flying here. If I'm reading the message correctly, they'll be here in a few days. They're looking for the missing Condor. And they have no idea of the danger. Everything makes sense now. They were coming to rescue their people from the very beginning. I'm entering the cargo hold. Right, okay, so um, this basically just revolves around an elevator. There's the condom achievement, the condor achievement. Thank God. So, interact with the button here. You might have to wait a few seconds. And then we've just got to pickpocket a couple of dead guys, get their key cards. So, as you can see, we need a key card in order to get the elevator to work. Rohitra is going to be all like, er, champion or other. And we can answer him back. But basically, the key card, there's a dead guard outside anyway, just out of the elevator. So, it's all good. I can't hear you clearly. May a meteor strike you. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear, Doctor. Over and out. <laughs> So go ahead, go out of here, just take a small right. And you can see the guard's lead sticking out there, so there's the key card. Just interact that with the elevator and press the only button available. Okay, so two important things that we need to grab. One of those important things is for one of the endings as well, or for one of the achievements during an ending. <clears throat> so eventually we will be able to get the... In fact, the elevator doesn't even work here. You've got to go to the left, and that's where the elevator is, which I just realized. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> there it is. Again, as you can see, we can try and interact with the bridge, but we need a different card this time. Oh, 
Bollocks. What is with all these security measures? Rahitra? How did you get to the upper deck? I have a card, but now... It doesn't work. Uh, not everyone had access to the bridge. Next time, rob someone of higher rank. Over and out. What an asshole. So into the medbay we go. The medbay sounds like a new neighbors episode. Med bay. So take a left here. You can see there's one room open with a light on. This is where we're going to get the card. So this is the superior card or whatever. But we have to go. We have to delve deeper in order to get a uh, basically a sleeping drug. Um, and again, it is required for one of the sort of ending achievements. So that's what we need to do. So obviously we're not going to the right because it's darker than my... It's darker than Uranus. Yeah. So from here then we can take a left. Now again, I do apologize. This was slightly confusing. Um, <laughs> there is a specific section that we need to go in. And it ain't this one. Uh, a couple of dead guys there, but uh, yeah, it's not this one. So get out again. And we are going to go to the opposite side. That not that one's not going to work. It's basically the one in the top left corner. There it is, finally. So yeah, basically go top left corner. Then you're on the right path when you see those dead guys sitting around. Take a left. Take a left again through this door. And right at the very end, on the right you can see an empty syringe. And on the left is the one syringe that we need. Yeah. <laughs> that soporific sounds terrific. So, again, make sure that we've grabbed that, and then we can head back all the way through, all the way straight now to the elevator. And, uh, yeah, let's get these endings going. Now, personally, to get all the achievements, apart from the very, very last one, took about an hour and ten minutes, and that was obviously just um, reloading the checkpoint. Because just like the Rohitra one, uh, we had to choose two different options earlier on. It takes you back like about 10 to 12 minutes before. So you've got to go through more dialogue in order just to get to the next ending. So that's going to be a pain. I'm not going to lie, but uh, you got this. Not it. You can clearly control them, but <sighs> never mind. Dear Ackfield, ready to activate. Sphere. Oh, you came after all. Now that you're here, why don't you help me? With what? With the probes. They're over the battlefield. I do have visuals from the Cyclops here, but I can't do everything on my own. Oh, wait. Activity's increasing. They're coming. Are you helping or not? Come on, Yasna. So you're all good to help Rohitra now. Uh, this literally doesn't affect anything, so... You're effectively getting on the probe machine. He's going to tell you which ones, uh, which camera feed to go to, and that's all he's going to do for now. What am I looking at? Why is there a picture of my nipples on screen? You perv! Uh, but yeah, so he's just going to tell you um, which one to go to. This whole scene's going to play out where the Cyclops is going to try and kill the Ninja Star Deathflies, and it's going to go as well as you would imagine. Activation. I confirm. Field active. The clouds within reach. I'm shooting. The close range is dead. No wonder. It's boiling over there. The field is shrinking. Calm down, Yasna. It will hold. Whoa! Oh, oh, beautiful! It's not a machine, it's the devil himself. I'm telling you! Shit! I'm losing connection. Do you see anything? 
They're creating a tight formation. A cyclone. Fucking shit! That can't be good, right? What was that? You tell me. Can't you see anything? The mid-range is dead. How about the long range? The long range works. The cloud has stopped attacking. The Cyclops is... Huh? What is it doing? What did you see? Yasna! The cloud... won. What? You said... Don't count on the Cyclops anymore. The Sarkis must have gone haywire. It shot down the probes. Now it's probably operating with a new goal. Like all those machines earlier. I, d I don't understand. So I basically just run over to the right hand side because we are going to need to call in Commander Navik. And it's after we call him in. This Every time we reload the checkpoint, this is where we're going to start it from. And you can see why it's going to be quite a while. Again, about an hour and ten, I think it took me to get all five endings. And then obviously having to replay the game. So, uh, yep, with the bottom one there then, make sure to put it down to D. You'll have to hold the right trigger. And then get it down to D. It's, all, it's flashing, you know, you can't really miss this one. And then the top button there to get to number four. Again, any dialogue options at this point, it does not matter. So choose what you want. I'm here, Astrogator. Unfortunately, I don't have good news. The Cyclops got out of control. What do you mean? Just like the other machines. Now, it'll wander around aimlessly. Or even worse. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Ray Hitler is planning now? I have no idea. Well, then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hello, Condor. This is Astrogator Novik, commander of the IC Dragonfly ship. I repeat, this is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all this? Rohitra. Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak. Which, I guess, makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces. To prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree. Officially and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. That's why we need to change tactics. Hmm. Well, to be honest, I don't see how changing tactics in this situation would make any difference. I strongly disagree, Novik. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no mem... What? A nuclear weapon? Seriously? Damn right! I won't leave all this unresolved! How many warheads do you have? Fifty-four. From thirty kilos to one hundred megatons. Oh... That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. We really do have enough power. That's an understatement, Doctor. And a man of energy could rip the planet to pieces. I'm not an idiot. I won't send everything at once. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads. To start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rahitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna. I know how it must look to you. 
A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here. So this is where the important dialogue options take, uh, basically take case then. So we're going for a violent solution first. So the first option we're going to choose is the bottom option, which basically is all about revenge. So we need to be talking about revenge and trying to get rid of the Ninja Star death flies uh, in order to get the violent solution achievement. So make sure to choose revenge or not. The cloud threatens humanity. Bottom option. I understand, yes. Although it's hard to talk about revenge here. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. And probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. That's why I would consider this problem in the category of neutralization, not vengeance. After all, nothing guarantees the flies will stay on Regis 3 if they continue to evolve. Wait a minute, Doctor. Even if they were to master space navigation, wouldn't it take hundreds of thousands of years? Millions of years, even, considering the evolutionary timeline. However, they could threaten humanity much sooner, by sheer chance. Not a chance I'm willing to take. Let's not overreact. If we factor in sheer chance, we might as well get killed by a meteor. No, Novik. It's not a meteor, or an ocean, or a storm. They don't hunt, or degrade, or cripple you mentally. You and Hitler are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget for Hitler. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient. The for the next option, we're going to choose the middle one, which is they are our enemies even if they don't know it. So they are enemies even if they don't know it. Sentient or not. They are the enemies of all protein life. Our go, our enemies. Just like that? Yes. Please remember what we've learned. Before the machines came to read us three, this planet was teeming with life. Before the cloud wiped out all its competition. Wait, what species are you talking about? For this next one, you can just uh, choose the bottom option and the list is long. Just like my mustache. And mechanical creators of the cloud. No, I like. They are the products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. Uh, how did these machines even get here? Who built them? Probably some alien race. Highly evolved. It all adds up if we assume they crashed on Regis 3. But not even a single living organism survived the accident. Only machines were left. And then what? They started bashing. And we can just choose the second option next. There's no point in speculating. Argue. I'm sorry, but I don't know if there's any point in discussing this further. In short, we are facing an entity that has triumphed over countless adversaries, both organic and mechanical ones. I see no point in prolonging this discussion. For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I'll even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. So this next one is important for this ending. We have to choose the second option again, which is, no, we have to attack until we succeed. Actually, I don't. I think we should proceed with the attack. Even after everything you've learned, Doctor? After everything you've been through? Because of it, we have to destroy the cloud. Well, I still have significant concerns. But you're the one there, not me. Maybe I'm not seeing the whole picture. Well, indeed, Novik. I knew Yasna would understand. Now give me a minute. I'm almost done. So, 
we're going to be clicking the two buttons and basically launching the nukes. But we won't be done with the ending just yet. Do I use them to launch the rockets? Not yet. We use a button for that. The red one. Watch your eyes. So there was violent solution then. That's that achievement done. But we uh, effectively. So now we can basically there's going to be a lander for us um, at the top. So we basically have to run up to the top. Uh, what is, again, what's annoying is we have to do uh, the two options there. So we're going to do the first one, and then we have to go through all of this part again. So basically agree with Rohitra, blow up, nuke everything, just anything to get up back to the top, and then we have to choose the second option. So, oh my god, they said the word! Ah, invincible! Oh. Well, this guy looks, uh, and you kind of look, uh, well, I bet you've had better days, haven't you? Into orbit. Do you have a landing pad anywhere? At the bow. All you gotta do is open the dome. Okay, go get the others. I'll take... So we're sticking around this area because with the three screens in front of us, this is the control station. We're going to open this one up. Uh, you're not timed or anything, so, you know, no need to rush. Oh, I've just seen your anus again. <laughs> Man, you got to still show me that. Uh, so, up we go. Choose the top option there, bridge. LP for... <laughs> Le period. No, wait, that's landing pad in French, isn't it? Yes. Um, so, when we get here, we can... There's going to be an exit sign somewhere. There it is. So, you can either go left or right, doesn't matter. But we go up the exit... The lander will be there, and then we will have two options. One is for waiting for um, Rohitra and Spruskas and Lendor. And the other one is just to evacuate. So the first one we're going for first is um, waiting for Rohitra. So there we go, finally found the entrance. I'm Rohitra's team. I, I, I don't know. They're not here yet. You must fly away. Now. So, get inside, hit the switch to the left, or to the right of us now, and we need to choose the top option, which was I was supposed I was supposed to wait for Rohitra's team, or I was supposed to wait for Rohitra, so press the top option. And, well, it's not going to be a uh, a happy ending for us, but we will get the I Leave No Mutton behind no exceptions achievement. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, all's well that ends well. Death, but we get an achievement out of it, so, hmm. Oh yeah, plus we'll get the end achievement, that's just for uh, completing the story at least once. So, from here then, you can just press and hold the B button in order to go back. And we press continue, and like I said, every time we continue from this point on, we do start... I know, it's, uh, it's a bit stinky to say, but we do start from where we first get in contact with the radio to, uh, to Novik. So yes, every time we continue, this is where we will start. So again, for the evacuation ending, which we're going for next, we basically have to just go through exactly what we just done with uh, Rohitra. So again, it's about another 10, 12, 13 minutes or so. 
Uh, we're going to be doing the violence, basically the violence solution way again. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not going to be showing you every single ending, just the important ones. So for this one, of course, you're going to say we will attack the um, the Death Ninja Flying Stars. Uh, so basically, just agree with everything that Rohitra says, and then we should then be able to get up to the landing pad and then choose the other option, which was to evacuate. But again, like I said, doing these endings literally took about an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes. And it's literally just the fact that we couldn't get through all the dialogues. So, um, yeah, I do hope there's a little bit of a chapter. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I do hope in the future there is a chapter select and an, and the ability to skip through cutscenes, which you've already seen before. That should be part of one. Um, but yeah, so obviously, like I said, the, I'm only going to be showing you in each ending the important bits, the important dialogue choices that we need to make rather than going through uh, each part and listening to the same, same bit again, again, and again. So you go through all this, um, agree with everything Rohitra says, then you should get back up to the landing pad, interact with the switch here on the right of the door. Yep, don't worry about that. Again, you can choose any option here, it literally doesn't make a difference, nothing, keep the jar with the flies, or whatever. And then, this time, we will evacuate. So, where, before, you said, I need to wait for Ohitra, this time you just evacuate. For some reason, I didn't show that in this part then, but that is what is happening. And so this time then, when the achievement unlocks, we can just go ahead and reload the last checkpoint again. Obviously, as you're already aware, it just gets back to the uh, point. So this time we go for the strong objector, uh, strong objection achievement, which is uh, for forcing Rohitra to stop further attacks on the cloud. So we're going for a couple of different dialogue options this time. Engineer Rohitra, among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak. Which, I guess, makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces. To prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree. Officially and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. And with the first couple of dialogue options here, the one where you only had one choice, you can literally just leave that. Go nice and empty so we don't waste any further time. That's why we need to change tactics. Hmm. Well, to be honest, I don't see how changing tactics in this situation would make any difference. I strongly disagree, Novik. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory, only pure energy. You still haven't answered me, Vitra. Please, just tell me straight. What are you up to? I'm arming the charges. Arming what? Explosives, plasma munitions? Hydrogen. What? Vitra? Are you serious? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads. To start with. And then? We'll see. I'm against escalating the conflict. Huh. So much for our groundbreaking cooperation. I didn't... Why do you jump to conclusions so quickly? How has it turned out for you so far? Clearly you lack tactical experience. Save it, Novik. I don't need a lecture. This is my ship and my people. And it's my goddamn duty to avenge them. Period. So this time, when we get to this answer, we're going to choose the top option. Which says, I get it. I'd like to avenge them too. Not only do I understand you, I feel the same desire. But... 
Revenge is out of the question. Why? We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution, and probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. While we express our suffering, rage, and frustration, we won't accomplish much. We won't harm it. We won't instill fear in it. We won't make it surrender. I'm going to destroy it, Yasna. Not scare it, not hurt it. Exterminate every last piece of it. You and Hitler are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget for Hitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient. Next up, we're going to choose the top option again, which is these creatures aren't consciously hostile towards us. So top option, these machines aren't consciously hostile towards us. They're not stupid or hostile, but rather programmed to react to radio waves, to brain waves. How? They're breaking down communications to thwart the exchange of information. So, uh, they see no difference between a man and a machine? They take our brains for transmitters. That's why they're attacking us? Exactly. Wait, what species are you talking Next up, we'll choose the bottom option again, which is the list is long, donkey schlong. Hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. Uh, how did these machines even get here? Who built them? Probably some alien race. Highly evolved. It all adds up if we assume they crashed on Regis 3. But not even a single living... And for the next one, we're going to choose the top option, which is Necro-Evolution Discussion. So the top option now is going to be, like I said, a Necro-Evolution Theory Discussion. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis 3, and these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves, or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they Next, we're going to choose the middle option. I'm betting on a crisis. So in detail, I'm betting on a crisis. I mean, Crisis 4 would be nice. What's a guiding principle of a homeostat? Ugh, I don't... Uh, that was a rhetorical question. It's all about survival and changing conditions, even the harshest ones. If further forms of necroevolution were no longer threatened by the local fauna, but they had to find sources of energy and materials from which they could produce replacement parts and offspring. Originally, their descendants were undoubtedly powered by radiant radiation. But on Regis, there are no radioactive elements at all. Ah, uh -huh. sounds familiar. When the energy runs out, you have to wheel and deal. Yes, the default source wasn't available anywhere. So they had to look for an alternative. There was a severe energy crisis and, and a conflict among the machines. Simply put, they fought to survive exist that's what evolution is all about about selection wait doctor we've established that these beings are mindless 
shouldn't the organisms with the most developed nervous systems win the game of evolution? In this case, instead of a nervous system, there was some kind of electrical one. But the principle remains the same. Not exactly, sir. The most advanced of the mechanisms that landed here derived energy from their own radioactive resources. Simpler devices such as small repair systems could have had solar panels. And in that case, would have had a significant advantage over the others. But the other ones could defend themselves. They could attack. With atomic power. Yes, that's possible. But I see it differently. In necroevolution, the most successful beings were those that excelled in miniaturization above all else. Also, the sedentary creations. The former gave rise to the clown, which the flies form unnecessary in pursuit of a common interest. Meanwhile, the sedentary ones gave rise to a peculiar species of metallic vegetation. Those structures formed the city. So, it's still functional? No. For some reason, the city lost a fight for survival. And now, there are only rusting remains. Only one form survived. The microbots that conquered the land on Regis Three. So, these flies just adapted best to the conditions of this planet yes that's how it works so to summarize some alien race sent advanced robots to regis 3 the local dinosaur like monsters tried to eat them so the robots produced other robots which produced more and more robots until they fell victim to their own overproduction after a number of iterations and wars for resources they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I would even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating... Oh, yeah, the discussions go on for a while. Right, so the next option we're going to choose is the top option. I fully agree we should not attack. Yeah. I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Richard. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet, it's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water or food. And for the next option, again, this is important for one of the endings as well, is the top option, wait for the invincibles. So wait for the Invincible is what we're going for first. The Invincible is near. We can wait for its arrival. Huh, <laughs> right. That is one solution. Although I was hoping you'd come back to Dragonfly. Back home. Let's drop it, all right? Further discussion is pointless. The charges are almost ready. Rehitra, for fuck's sake, be reasonable. You and then quickly choose the uh, middle option, which is I can't let you do this. I can let you do this. There we go. And I won't have you endanger my subordinates. Oh, good one. I wasn't the one who sent her to the surface of this shit. And this is where we can go over and stick this needle straight in Rohitra's neck. This will immediately get us the strong objection achievement, because that ain't going well. Nice. Nice rare achievement there. Um, but again, yep, we will. That obviously is just a part of the achievement. We're going to get the next ending as well. And this one is for living to see the arrival of the Invincible. He wasn't listening to reason. Which will come in handy for the next option. I'll stay and wait for the Invincible, which is the middle option. I'll stay and wait for the Invincible. Now I hope the Invincible's crew thinks the same. The Invincible? Are you saying that... Yes. I'm staying on Regis 3. Yes, sir. You should fly away, Astrogator. Warn everyone from the Commonwealth. And I'll warn those who come here. So, all we can do now is... Yes, indeed, Doctor. It, yes, sir. It was truly an honor. <laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the right words. I know I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Sometimes. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm extremely grateful to you. You could have flown away so many times, yet you stayed with me until the end. Thank you. You shouldn't thank me. It was my bounden duty as commander. My only regret is that I couldn't do more. And that 
some decisions. Please don't blame yourself anymore. There's no point. Now Koval, Krauter, and Gorski need you. Understood? Yes, Mom. Have a safe journey, Novik. Thank you, Yasna. And see you soon. Over and out. Finally. It's them. <laughs> And there we go then, that's another ending done. So we've got two more now before we have to do a, another playthrough. So again, reload it and we go through the same thing again. This time when we get to this point, I know you'll understand, we're gonna take chase the second option there. I understand how you feel. We can't approach this problem in terms of revenge. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution, or probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. We won't gain anything from a mindless attack. On the other hand, knowledge about these creations may turn out to be crucial in helping their victims. In helping you, Rahitra. My memory, you could... It's possible. Well, thank you. What for? I haven't done anything. <laughs> for reminding me of my mom. But as long as the cloud is a threat to others, my condition comes second. You, Rahitra, are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? Oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget, Rahitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. And for the next option, we're getting a little bit personal. We're going to choose the bottom option, which is you're as thick as a brick yourself, Rohitra. Damn, Yasna with the burn. Oh, Rohitra, you have no idea what we're up against. These mechanisms are just doing what they did a millennia ago. And we were the ones that provoked them. What? How? By coming here with all our gear, blasters, transmitters, rockets. It's like kicking a hornet's nest. They've faced countless species over millions of years. At this scale, humanity is just... And then for the next one, again, we can just choose the bottom option, which is... The list is long, Mr. King Kong. Lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations. But something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for this. How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Probably some alien race. Highly evolved. It all adds up if we assume they crashed on Regis 3. But not even a single living organism survived the... Again, it will be the top option, necro-evolution theory discussion. Tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotions. They don't... argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis 3. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms, left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. And for the next one, we will choose the top option again, which is, in short, 
evolution, this is how evolution works. The top option, in short, this is how evolution works. The guiding principle of a homeostat, to survive. Apparently the machines pose a threat to one another. They use the same source of energy to function. A common, finite resource. Okay, but why did some flies survive this? Not something bigger, better. The way I see it, they were better. The best. In necroevolution, the bots that used up the fewest resources won. So they miniaturized, or became sedentary. The former process gave rise to the cloud. The latter started this bizarre genre of, of metal structures resembling vegetation, which formed the city. And they're still growing? No. They lost the fight for survival, and now they're just rusting remnants. Only one form survived. The flying microbots that conquered all land areas on Regis Three. So these flies were just the best adapted? To the conditions of this planet? Yes, that's how it works. So, to summarize, some alien race sent advanced robots to Regis Three. Local dinosaur-like monsters tried to eat them, so the robots produced other robots, which produced more and more robots, until they fell victim to their own overproduction. After a number of iterations and wars for resources, they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I'll even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. Again, it's going to be another top option answer. This one, I fully agree. We shouldn't attack. We should not attack. Yeah, I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Ritra. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet. It's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water, or food. And this time we can choose the op the second option, evacuate from Mia. So the middle option there, evacuate from Mia. This place and never come back. We have a lander. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. You on the other hand? I'm surprised you didn't evacuate already. Well, I had to make sure you won't do something you'll deeply regret. Huh. I'm done. Warheads are armed. One more press of a button, and there'll be no turning back. I can't. Uh, that was close. I'm suspending all actions leading to conflict. So choosing those options should now give us the Peacemaker achievement. And now make sure to choose the middle option, I'll wait for the Invincible with you. So I accidentally chose the top option here, but make sure you choose the middle option, which was I will wait for the Invincible with you. And then what that's going to do, um, like if you just choose the top option, it gets you to another end, um, but it doesn't give you an achievement. So what we need is uh, what we needed to have done there was choose the middle option um which was again i'll wait with the invincibles for you which i'm going to do right now i can't uh, that was close i'm suspending all actions leading to conflict but what should i do now well we have a lander so you can get to the dragonfly all of us I'm staying. What? What? I'm staying here. We'll wait for the Invincible together. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Someone has to warn them, Astrogator. And Rahitra is... well... Don't sugarcoat it, Yasna. I think we're all aware of my condition. Yes, the doctor reported it. Because of this and many other reasons, I feel I must stay. Uh, well, I need to check on the guys. It was good talking, Astro Gator. See you in a minute, Yasta. Yeah. Take care. So, he's gone. Doctor. Yes, sir. It was truly an honor. 
<laughs> I'm having a hard time finding the right words. I have one last request. I'm listening. I'd like Koval, Krauter, and Gorski to remember me, even just from your stories. Of course. I'll let everyone know what you did for them. No, no. I don't care about gratitude. I just want them to know who I was. I am. What? I will try to do justice in capturing your extraordinary character. Although I must admit, it's not an easy assignment. As always, I'm not making anything easier for you, Novik. <laughs> As always, yes, sir. Have a safe journey. Thank you, and... Uh, take care. Over and out. tired that's what i meant to say because you're trying to be polite the undeniable truth is i look and feel like shit <sighs> will you close it for me uh, of course <laughs> you everything all over again. No, yes, no. I know me all too well. I won't believe the cloud can't be defeated. Or help you convince the Invincibles crew you're innocent. You'll end up in custody, and they'll just repeat our mistakes. That's a strange feeling. Remaining conscious in the hibernator. <laughs> you clearly haven't visited the infirmary often. This is a standard procedure for a long recovery. Will you take another look at Landor and Spluskas? Sure I can. Though, I doubt their condition has changed. Thank you. Are you still wondering whether to go to the nest? This is probably your last... So this is the another very important uh, dialogue choice that we have to make in order to get the last ending achievement of the game that we can. Choose the middle option, I decided to go. So make sure to decide to go. If you end up staying, you will miss the achievement and you'll have to go through the whole cutscene and the whole everything again. Make contact to, to understand. I know, but you will come back, won't you? I intend to. And there it is, innate curiosity. So, if you take a look, you should now have one achievement left, 
And oh, oh this is uh, this is a bit of a killer. But uh, so if the backup save managed to work for you, or if uh, you know that's all good, and then you get to the path where you can take the road to the Alliance base or the landing pad. <laughs> Um, hopefully it does work for you, and again, that'll just cut two hours out of your playtime, and then you've only got two hours left to play. Um, now, obviously, if you do have to go through a new game again, obviously the good thing is you don't have to go off the beaten path in order to get things and uh, do things. You can literally just get straight to each point. Um, but again, I, of course, won't show you another playthrough because it's... Uh, pretty pointless i'll just be showing you the last two bits uh, so again i really really hope that the backup save if you manage to do one here i really hope it worked otherwise we can just go straight to the road to the landing zone again if it didn't you will have to play again it's around two hours wasn't it um which is uh which is a bit of a long time especially in this christmas period when you're gifting Going everywhere and seeing family and all you want to do is sit down, eat snacks and play games. It's a hard life, I know. Anyway, so all this bit is then, you're just going to go forward, you're going to see the lander smash into the ground. You can go ahead, speak to the robot and then it'll uh, effectively give you a cutscene where it'll automatically just put you on the road to the Alliance base. Anyway, what would have been nice um, for this achievement... So basically, this, this achievement that we're going for is Yasna witnessing the devastating power of the cloud. What would have been better, um, and at just a, a lot less time, was if we managed to get on the landing, the, the lander or the hopper, whatever, and then we just got surrounded and eaten by the ninja death flies. That would have been a lot shorter and a lot better. That's just one of my little... Ugh, one of my little icks is when any game forces you to have to replay an entire game just for like one achievement or you know anything like that that's i'm not i'm not really a big fan of that but they each to their own so anyway once you have done this then you get all the way to the end again when you get to the end with rohitra you're going to be agreeing with him that you want to nuke the flies and everything so he is eventually going to let us loot nuke the launches and then it is just <laughs> Launch the nukes even, I'll try that one again. And then it is just a case of waiting, singing, and pretty much getting your ass beat. Watch your eyes. Rohitra, they're flying this way. What have you done? Astrogator, you must evacuate. Now! I'll... I'll join you later. <sighs> Legs become too heavy, hands become too heavy. Night is not that scary. Ah! No, I'm dead. Alright, so finally, 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 there we go then. That is going to be the final achievement. And again, you can only get that ending when you take the road to the landing zone. 
But there we go, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed the game as much as I did. I hope the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. A big shout out as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members and everyone who interacts with me on the Daily Riots. So thank you so much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Big love, chunky nuts.